here in the Irish Hills outside Detroit, one driver hopes the luck of the Irish will follow him through today's race. It's been a tough year for Mark Martin. If he didn't have bad luck, he'd have no luck at all. The car has run well at most races, but he's seen his chances for victory end, in some cases, before they begin. At other times, he's seen his chance of winning go up in smoke and even roll away in the pit area. When he was here at Michigan in June, luck was nowhere to be found. The problem in that case was fuel mileage. It denied him a dominating victory. Last week at Watkins Glen, he had by far the fastest car, but his bad luck this time came in the pit area on two different occasions. The break came when leader Kyle Petty and second place Dale Earnhardt crashed, resulting in Martin's first victory of 1993. Today, Martin has brought to these Irish Hills all kinds of lucky charms, hoping they'll carry him on his winning ways. Even crew chief Steve Meal has a four-leaf clover as Martin hopes to have another dominant day at Michigan International Speedway. ESPN, the world's leader in motorsports coverage, welcomes you live to Michigan International Speedway and the champion Spark Plug 400. Hot, hazy, and humid are the weather words for today. We have a temperature that's in the mid-80s, and there is a 40% chance of rain later this afternoon. The point standings, Dale Jarrett, 281 behind the points leader, Dale Earnhardt. Mark Martin has moved to fourth in the point standings, but he's only 103 out of second place. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Jenkins and welcome to Michigan International. Mark Martin is without question the hottest driver going right now. He won last weekend at Martin uh, Watkins Glen and he won yesterday's Bush Grand National race here. In the last five races, he's moved up eight positions in the point standings and gained 55 points on Dale Earnhardt. Now, while Mark is moving in on the points leader, others are moving in on their first win. And Ned and Benny, that's going to be reflected in a few minutes in the starting lineup for today. Bob, in qualifying on Friday afternoon, 12 cars broke the existing track record. And Ned, in looking at the starting lineup, we don't have to go too far to try to find someone who needs a victory. No, the man on the pole, Ken Schrader, has five poles this year, but no victories. And you know how badly he wants to win, and he's certainly capable. And on the outside pole, Lake Speed has put the Robert Yates Ford there. Only his second race in that car, but it is a proven winner on this racetrack. And I think Lake Speed just might be the guy that can put it back in victory lane. Now let's go back to row three. Todd Bodine and Ted Musgrave, a couple of guys who run well, but you wouldn't think would be in the third row. Well, Ted Musgrave has always run well on this racetrack. He just announced this week that he'll have a new ride in 1994 driving for Jack Roush. And uh, he might just win his first race ever here. And Benny, there are four former Daytona 500 winners starting in the second half of the field. Wonder what we can expect seeing those guys come up through the field. And some of the guys that broke track records were rookies. Here's Jerry Punch with them. Guys, not since 1979 has the Max Race Car Rookie Battle seen this much talent come in the circuit in one year. Remember 79? Dale Earnhardt, Harry Gant, and Terry Labonte. Earnhardt won out, but it was an awfully close battle. This year, three very dynamic rookies, all three qualifying up front. Fifth, sixth, seventh row. Back in row seven, we have Kenny Wallace, the Dirt Devil Pontiac, coming off his best finish at night at Watkins Glen. Row six, right behind me, the Maxwell House Ford. Bobby Labonte, former Bush Series champion. His best finish ever, seven to Watkins Glen. But remember Talladega, he started 41st, shotgun on the field, came all the way to second place on the white flag and ran out of gas. But he's coming in a hurry. Thanks to Tim Brewer and the crew. And what about row five? Jeff Gordon, the DuPont Chevrolet driver. Remember what he did in Daytona? Won the qualifier, finished fifth in the 500, and he finished second here back in June of this car. Possibly a rookie could win it here today. And Jeff Gordon has a good shot. Why are these rookies so comfortable? For more, here's John Turner. 
Jerry, I guess you could say everybody's a little more comfortable because Goodyear has brought a really great tire for this racetrack. In fact, it's the same one they ran at Dover earlier this year. A little bit softer on the right side, so they're a lot faster. Also, more efficient use of the contact patch. And the tires wear great. Everybody expects them to be very, very consistent today. In fact, Bob, the only problem a lot of the crew chiefs have uh, thought about today is that they're turning the engine so hard because of the increased speeds that we could see some motor problems. Well, those increased speeds have led to an unbelievable statistic. All 40 qualifiers today were faster than the pole speed turned in in the race here in June. ESPN Speed World is being brought to you by Champion Spark Plugs. No matter what you drive, Champion has quality from the start. By Valvoline, people who know, use Valvoline. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Okay, Benny, we'll talk to Jeff. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to ESPN Speed World coverage of the Champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International. Let's take a look now at the starting lineup. The pole sitter is in the Kodiak Chevrolet. Ken Schrader from Fenton, Missouri, qualifying at 180.750. He'll drive car 25. Lake Speed is outside the front row in the Texaco Haviland Ford. He's from Jackson, Mississippi. Ricky Rudd will start third. He's from Chesapeake, Virginia, and will drive the number five tied Chevrolet. Outside the second row is Morgan Shepard from Condover, North Carolina, in the number 21 Sitco Ford. The third row, Franklin, Wisconsin's Ted Musgrave in the Jasper Engines U.S. Air Ford, car number 55. And then Todd Bodine in the factory store's Ford number 75, Todd Hales from Chemung, New York. Starting in seventh position will be Dale Earnhardt in the GM Goodrich Chevrolet, car number three. And then Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia in the number 11, Budweiser Amoco Ford. The fifth row, Jeff Gordon from Pittsburgh, Indiana, drives the DuPont Chevrolet, car number 24. And then from St. Louis, Missouri, Rusty Wallace in the Miller Genuine Pontiac, number two. The 11 starting spot goes to Bobby Labonte in the Maxwell House Ford, number 22. And then Mark Martin from Batesville, Arkansas, in the number six, Valvoline Ford. Rest of the starting lineup in row number seven, it's Greg Sachs and Kenny Wallace. Jimmy Hensley and Rick Mast go from positions in the eighth row. Derek Cope and Bobby Hillen in row nine. Brett Bodine and Harry Gant back in the tenth row. And now we begin the second day qualifiers, or at least those who qualified and stood on their time. Joe Nemechek was the fastest second day qualifier. Also, Ernie Irvin is back in the second half of the field. And as Ned indicated, four former Daytona 500 winners are starting in the second half of the field. 41 cars here today and as you will see in just a few moments the provisional starter was Terry Labonte who crashed his car during a qualification attempt and his speed yesterday during second day qualifying was not good enough to get into the field. Well, our in-car cameras today are being carried by, among others, Jeff Bodine in the Motorcraft Ford and uh, Benny, let's see if we can race Jeff here. Hi, Jeff Bodine. This is Benny Parsons of ESPN. You hear me? Hey, buddy, I see you're dropping back. What's the problem? Well, we're going to come in here, make a little pit stop, uh, top out with you before the, this race. Uh, but the real problem is I, was, I missed my driver's introduction out at the start-finish line. I was uh, had a little stomach virus this morning in the, in the restroom, take care of that, and I missed it by about 10 drivers. So uh, here I come in, and pits are going to have to start last. So we figured, well, what the heck, let's just fill it up with fuel. You mean the penalty for a missing introduction? Did you have to start at the rear of the field? Yeah, that's it. I'm going to stop here and let these boys put a little fuel in me and check it out. Maybe we can, maybe we can uh, out, out gas him here, out, outlast him with fuel. Well, you know, fuel mileage has always been a factor here at Michigan. Maybe that one lap will help. Well, we're going to try. Of course, this opportunity, I always need to take time to say hi to Kathy and uh, Matthew back home. I love them. Uh, let's hope this is a good race for us. Well, good luck to you, buddy. Thanks, Benny. 
Jeff Bodine and Daryl Waltrip will drop to the rear of the field because they uh, missed the driver introductions. There is Morgan Shepard. As you can see, he's lined up in the second row. Just ahead of him is Lake Speed, and the pole sitter, uh, Kenny Schrader, is to his left up front. And our third in-car camera will be carried by Bobby Hillen, driving the High Lake Myers Ford. And now let's take a look at our Bush track description as uh, we get set to take the green flag. This is a two mile D shaped tri oval, and the speed was 180.750, the pull speed 39.834 seconds, and this is now the third fastest track on the series next to Daytona and Talladega. There you can see it is a D shaped tri oval here at Michigan International with some uh, pretty good banking on the turns. Out in turns number one and two, the banking is at 18 degrees. And a fairly easy corner to negotiate because of the, the trial will be turned the way it does. It gets you in turn one really well. Backstretch, 2,200 feet. Turn three, very difficult this racetrack because you go in so you have to make the car turn such a sharp angle, and here they come, Bob. Off of turn number four, the green awaits it is flying, and here we go with the Champion Spark Plug 400. Welcome to our live coverage here this afternoon. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. his Hendrick teammate Ken Schrader for the lead, but Schrader holds him off Lake Speed running third. Then comes Shepard and Earnhardt. Earnhardt has moved up. Now we see that's the combo nine car, Ted Musgrave side by side. Mark Martin went in last weekend when the car was so dominant here in June. Ooh, and combo nine gets up in the least of the field. Yeah, he got very high going into that turn. He backed off, got the car back under control. A couple cars went by, but here's Rudd going for the lead. Oh, he went way down to the white line using every inch of racetrack, but it worked. Ricky Rudd takes command from Ken Schrader. Battle back for fourth position now as Earnhardt. We see him pass more of Chevy and up to turn two, car into the wall. Is that Todd Bodine? I believe it is, and he stays very high. Now he comes back down, but it looks like everyone is going to get by him. A miracle, really, as far up in the pack as he was, that everybody was able to get by. So Todd Bodine in the factory stores of America Ford, a little damage on the rear there. You can see that uh, left rear quarter panel hanging down. The car spun and slid about halfway down the banking, but fortunately those behind him missed him. Some went high, some went low, but everything is okay as the caution comes out for the first time, and Todd Bodine is the reason for our first yellow. See him there, just the car just looked like it gets loose, Bob, and spins around to the high side of the racetrack. Fortunately, it stays up there for a pretty good little bit, then comes back down, but still room enough as wide as this track is for others to get by. And that's one of the nice things about this track here at Michigan. It is nice and wide, which allows for four and five abreast racing, and it also allows a lot of running room when there is trouble ahead of you. We'll be right back. Hi, Jeff. This is Benny Parsons. Can we talk to you when you come back from break? Yeah, go ahead, Benny. Uh, guys, you want to stop stop it off again? Hmm. Did you pass any of those guys? They look me like they're all hard to pass. <laughs> well, you know, he's six. jammed up here right at the start, but yeah, I can pass him. <laughs> <laughs> No, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> Jeff is one to go. We're going to leave you alone for right now. Okay. 
Ryan's coming in. Yep, probably a good plan. Yeah. All right. Your graphic's not right. Morgan Shepard. Yeah, Shepard in fifth. Under our first caution of the race here at Michigan Imagine International Speedway, a spin by Todd Bodine, and Jeff Bodine has come in for another pit stop. And again, we point out that this has been in the last couple of races a fuel mileage race, and so Jeff is taking advantage of every opportunity to come in and top off. He had passed what, Ned, five or six cars since the start of the race, yeah. and he felt like he could pass those cars again. So why not stop, get the extra fuel, the gallon or two of gas he might need. And the uh, Todd Bodine car is on pit road. Jerry, here's uh, an update. Bob Todd brought the factory stores forward down pit road. Butch Mock Enterprises crew working on it. Uh, they had a flat right front tire. I'm not sure whether the tire went down prior to the spin. They really don't know themselves. The tire apparently the car went over the corner and just lurched. And Todd spun it and tried to keep it from damaging too much to the car. They're changing now left side tires. They've already changed the right side tires. They hope to be able to get Todd back out. But uh, the right front tire was down on the interliner when he came down pit road. And Jerry's so going to go down a lap here as the field comes off of turn four to get the green flag. Yeah, the pace car is moving in. The field is coming down, and Bodine is not going to get out ahead of the pack as it comes down and takes the green flag, and we resume our competition. Ricky Rudd, who won here in June, continues to lead, but now Ken Schrader challenges once again on the inside as there's a side-by-side -side battle for third. Lake Speed is on the inside, and Dale Earnhardt on the outside. Down the back stretches Morgan Shepard, watches from fifth. Lake Speed's trying to figure out who's going to make the pass. He wants to follow them. And it looks like Schrader's the guy that's hung that on the inside. He and Earnhardt almost got together. And uh, yeah, I think that inside position right now is not the place to be, Ben, because they're hooked up in a draft on the high side, had momentum coming off the turn. They're going to drive right on by straight. He'll be fourth going into turn one. It's not as much as a factor at here as it is at Daytona or Talladega, but drafting is definitely a factor. And there is Bill Elliott and Rusty Wallace. Not too far behind is Bobby Labonte there in car number 22. That's eighth, ninth, and tenth as Labonte takes a look to the inside of Rusty Wallace. Well, pulls out and makes the pass look easy. Now Rusty will come back up on the outside. Now he's got Greg Sachs. Rusty has Greg Sachs right behind him, the country time car. And like Nick, we talked about on the last lap, that draft on the outside, they go by that car on the inside. 22 car, though, of the Labonte able to get back up in line. First seven cars have kind of broken away from uh, the others. And Rudd stretches it out now just a little bit over Dale Earnhardt, who has taken second position. And here is Jeff Gordon racing alongside Ernie Irvin. I'll tell you what, Ernie Irvin is the guy on the move. Yeah, he had a poor qualifying by his standards, at least here, starting in 24th position. But normally that Morton McClure Kodak film Chevrolet qualifies up towards the front. More on that. Let's go to Piss and John Kerner. Just somewhat of a concern. The guys who are down here in the pits are watching very closely, Ernie. They had to change the motors earlier this morning when they fired it up when they were inspecting the car before going through the uh, NASCAR inspection. They were doing their checklist. Something was wrong with the motor. They decided to change engines this morning. They're watching that. Ernie has also radioed in and told them that the car is just a little bit too tight. So look for them to make a chassis adjustment to loosen it up a little bit on the first round of pit stops. Ernie Urban is in 12th at the moment, trying to take 11th spot away from Bobby Labonte, and he just blew by him on the inside. Hey, what the car looks like, he is absolutely flat. Might be the fastest car on the racetrack. Mark Martin wants to move up his spot as he has pulled alongside Morgan Shepard and Ted Musgrave. Yeah, I think Mark Martin would challenge Ernie Irvin as far as the fastest car on the racetrack is concerned. Tough to pass on this racetrack when you get up towards the front. These cars are awfully fast, and you saw Martin had a problem down on the inside, but... Uh, 
That car really was working good yesterday in practice. Musgrave and Martin will be teammates next year for Jack Roush. Ted Musgrave has been confirmed as the replacement for Wally Tallenbach Jr. We look out the back of Morgan Shepard's car to Musgrave. He pulls up right on the back bumper. And Mark Martin must have got his car a little bit sideways as he came off the second corner because he lost several car lengths to Ted Musgrave. We see he's still trying to get those car lengths back. By the way, uh, Todd Bodine was in for another stop, but he's back out on the racetrack. As the lead continues to be held by Ricky Rudd, but now Lake Speed begins to pull up on uh, Dale Earnhardt and challenge him for second. They what, Lake Speed started driving his car. Watkins Glen did a great job, and so far this weekend, everything looks like it's just coming up roses for Lake Speed and Larry McGrone's rubber yeats and his crew. Riding on top of Morgan Shepard's car, and that's how far he is behind the lead group. The leader, Ricky Rudd, the tied Chevrolet, and here goes Lake Speed on the inside. Looks like he has the pass made. If he can come off before Hart will let him have the room, he did let him have the room. And boy, you need all, when you're coming off that fast, you need all of that room out to the wall. But he had it here. Right on around. Earnhardt started seventh, moved to fourth quickly, and now finds himself in third position. But Ricky Rudd is the man to beat right now. And here's Jerry Punch with more. Guys, Ricky Rudd won this race back in June on fuel mileage. He told me he was at best a third or fourth place car. No one could run with Mark Martin, including him. Now, back in June, they could run about 55 laps on fuel. That was their fuel mileage. But they gave up their advantage that we're going to give up our fuel mileage, different carburetor, different intake, different heads for horsepower. Today we're not going to get nearly the fuel mileage, but we're going for horsepower. We're going to turn this thing so we can possibly run with Mark Martin. I believe they've done a pretty good job right now. It looks like they've uh, they've won the battle. Yeah, they're doing all right, but there's some good racing behind as uh, there is the eight car. Up Sterling Marlin. He started 34th, is right now running 21st, and here's Mark Martin, Ted Musgrave, and Morgan Shepard looking back at Mark Martin. Battle among three boards here. Yeah, Musgrave is going to fall in behind Mark, it looks. Yep, he'll be his teammate next year. He said, let me see what gets him around this racetrack so fast. I'll fall in here for a little bit. 13 laps have been completed here. Ricky Rudd pulling out his advantage over Lake Speed as we continue to watch this battle. And there is the interval between that group of cars and the leader, Ricky Rudd. Back with more of our live coverage after this. Mark took over fifth. change. Hills of Southern Michigan and Michigan International Speedway is the venue for the 20th race of the Winston Cup season, the Champion Spark Plug 400. There is Ricky Rudd, who is making his 34th Michigan International start today. That breaks him third behind Dave Marcus and Daryl Waltrip in the active drivers. And Jeff Gordon is alongside Bill Elliott. 
and Elliott has been dropping back here from a starting position. Yeah, he started in eighth. The caution is out right now, Bob, as Ricky Rudd comes back to the start finish line. Perhaps debris on the track. Don't see a car or anything. Don't see anything that would indicate a spin or a crash of any type, so we presume that it's either debris or some type of oil on the racetrack. That's what one of our spotters is telling us that debris on the racetrack has caused the uh, caution flag debris in turn three. So now are they going to pit? They've run 17 laps. I think it'll depend a great deal on what Ricky Rudd does. And uh, I would 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 wager, you know, a handkerchief or something that they might would <laughs> Not very much. Huh? No, not too much. <laughs> One that I'm not going to use hopefully today. <laughs> They've run 35 miles. Yeah, you think yeah. they'll stop and get some I, gas? I believe they will. I believe they will. Well, we mentioned the fact that Bill Elliott was dropping back, at least from his starting position. Uh, Jerry, you been able to find out what might be the problem there? Indeed, Bob. You spoke with Mike Beam. What a break for Elliott. They were going to have to pit the next time out. They have a tire going down on the Budweiser Ford. So this caution was sort, certainly a, a big break for them. They would have lost a lap under green. And now they get to make their pit stop along with everyone else. It's going to be coming in momentarily for the first caution flag stop of the day. Big break for Bill Elliott. Now, as they come down pit row, the speed limit will be 65 miles per hour. And Jeff Bodine might stay on the racetrack because he has a four-lap cushion. He is only run about 15, 14, 15 laps. So he might stay out. Let's see if, what he's going to do. As everyone, look at this. Everyone follows Ricky Rudd down pit road. And Jeff Bodine, I see him back there. He came down as well. Jerry Punch, here we go. And the Hendrick Motorsports teams hitting five on top, 28 in the middle, and three on the bottom. That is two Chevrolets and a Ford. Five on top of your screen. That's Ricky Rudd. Right side tires already on. Left side's on for Dale. Now right side's going off Earnhardt. They went left side's first and then right side's on Earnhardt. 28 cars already out. That's Lake Speed and the Havilland crew. You're watching three pit stops. Split screen has Earnhardt and Rudd. Now head down pit road. You're watching three of the top contenders hitting simultaneously here on the first caution flag stop of the day. They head back for turn one. Well, instead of keeping track of two cars now, we're keeping track of three on the same screen. That's pretty neat. I tell you what, I don't... Is that a tire in the middle of pit road? Yeah, yes, it, it is. is. Dale Jarrett nearly hit it. I don't think he did, but now it has been retrieved from by one of the crewmen, so everything is okay on pit road. And the field lines up now for a restart, and it would appear as if Lake Speed will be the leader, and this is the uh, first time that Lake Speed has led a race since February of 1990 at the Daytona 500, 47 races ago. Well, they're going to assess a uh, stop and go penalty to Morgan Shepard, who ran over an air hose. So he'll be coming in for a quick stop. We're going to take another break under caution back at Michigan International Speedway in a moment. He didn't lead last week, huh? He didn't lead last week. Blake didn't lead last week. Yes, he didn't. <laughs> Man, Morgan didn't come in that time. Now he's got to come in on the green, then. Mm-hmm. Sure did. I tell you what, it's so hazy down turn one. I can't see. Yeah. Gotcha. Good. <clears throat> and if you guys were focusing it on Earnhardt, we can show them later why that didn't stop because they're, Earnhardt and the drivers are so accustomed to leaving when the jack goes. Okay. Tonight, you mean? The Reds and the... Okay. Lining up for a restart, they'll get the green this time around. Here's a pit stop summary. Ricky Rudd was the leader, but has come out in seventh position. Lake Speed before the pit stop was second. He's now going to be the leader. Earnhardt from a third to ninth. Ken Schrader from fourth to 17th. And Mark Martin from fifth position to eighth. Now, why did Lake Speed have such a good pit stop, John? Well, Bob, it was 11.9 seconds, right side tires only. The car was running just a little bit tight. Larry McReynolds said they hadn't really seen 
picking up that much whenever they put on four tires versus just putting on two tires. He said it could turn out to bite them, but they figured track position was so important, they wanted to get Lake out front. And he is as the green waves, and again, this is the first time since 1990 he's led on a lap. And Bobby, it was car number 41, Phil Parsons, that was a seven. Assess. assess the stop and go penalty for running over the air hose. So Phil did come in in the Mannheim Auto Chevrolet, and uh, he's at the rear of the field, but he did uh, take his penalty. We heard it was 21 Morgan Shepard. It was not. It was 41 Phil Parsons. Phil was running very good, too. He was running back in about 20th position before that pit stop, but was hanging right in, in fact, moving up some. Well, what Rudd uh, lost in the pit area, he's trying to make up on the racetrack. Here comes Mark Martin right slides ahead of Lake Speed and takes over the lead as Jeff Gordon and Greg Sachs battle for third. There's uh, Ted Musgrave way in the back. Lost several positions on that pit stop. Now looks like Jeff Gordon's hung on the inside. It was interesting that some teams chose to change two tires while others took on four. So we got some new faces up here in the crowd. Ernie Irvin also took two tires on his stop. That's the reason that uh, he got out so fast and is now in the lead. Jeff Gordon got passed by several cars as he got hung on the inside, but now he falls back in line as Rudd battles alongside the 68 car. And here comes Mark Martin racing alongside Rusty Wallace. And there's Dale Jarrett and Jeff Gordon also. Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, Dale Earnhardt. You said Dale Jarrett. But Sorry. Earnhardt. Yes, it is. Well, Dale Jarrett, appreciate that. He's not, that far. <laughs> He's not quite that far up right now. He's back probably about 22nd position right now. Now we see Mark trying to get by Sachs. They want passing is hard to do. I can see why they, they just changed two tires. Larry McReynolds and the crew just changed two. Going for that track position because we can see just how difficult it is to pass Mark Martin trying trying to get by Sachs. Can't make the pass. Good shot from the roof cam on Morgan Shepard's car. Jeff Gordon is ahead. And Rusty Wallace is beside or behind. And we can see that Mark Martin had to fall back behind Greg Sachs. Not able to make that pass. There he is again. And once again, can't make the pass. And Earnhardt gets by him on the outside. Now let's see if Earnhardt can pass Sachs. Now, Earnhardt took on four tires, didn't he? Yes, he did. And uh, yeah. that might be making a difference here. He's, he has passed several cars, just driven right on under him. And Rusty Wallace and, and uh, Gordon and several of them. So he's moving right along. That four-tire change line has helped him. Sterling Marlin has had a good uh, 24 laps. Musgrave going by Sterling Marlin. Yes, it was. He's there alongside now. He started way back in 34th position. He was up to about 20th, but uh, Michael Walter from Pennzoil Pontiac back, back behind these two. There's Hutch Strickland, McDonald's forward. There you can see how Marlin started 34th. And here's a race for the lead. Ooh, they get side by side. Hey, hey, oh, Lake had to back out. Wow. I mean, he had to back out big time, and Ernie did too. Ricky Rudd just went by both of them. Boy, I thought we had a major crash on our hands there, but both of them knew that they were out of shape and out of line, and so both of them backed off. It's resulted in Ricky Rudd taking the lead, and now here comes Earnhardt to challenge speed for third. Takes you a lap or two to get your bearings back and get your rhythm going Boy. again after you go through a situation like that. I said, hey, settle down here a little bit. Let's don't, don't take, do nothing too foolish here this early in the race. Take me a few laps to uh, clean my pants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we can see that Mark Martin is trying to pass these guys down the straightaway. He's not able to make it. They keep going by him on the outside. Mark Martin, who was so dominant in Jim, here losing positions. A lap ago in turn two, here's what happened. Lake Speed goes in the corner. Now he gets the car a little bit loose. He has to go up the hill to save it, but unfortunately, the four car is right there. And fortunately, Lake backed off the throttle. And Ernie had to back off the throttle too because uh, Lake got into him a little bit there. I think they really traded a little bit of paint. But Earnhardt there now takes over the third position from Lake Speed. 
Morgan Shepard down on the inside, trying to take a position away from Greg Sachs. Sachs is hanging right in there, the country time car. He sure is. And John Kernan has been keeping track of the uh, good race that uh, Sachs is having so far, John. You know, Bob, a lot of the drivers have been playing about the cars being tight. Sachs told me this morning that uh, they had actually gotten the car loose yesterday afternoon in the final practice session. He said that made him very, very happy because you can always tighten the car up during the race. It's easier to tighten the car up than it is to loosen it up during the race. And Greg says that's the way he likes the race car. He was very confident that he would have a good run today. Well, just as we uh, do a little bit of bragging on him, he loses one position to Mark Martin, but uh, no problem because he's still well up there in the top ten. This is on top of Morgan Shepard's car, the Sitco Ford. Greg is sixth and Morgan is seventh. Morgan trying to take a look on the inside as Mark Martin thought about looking on the inside of Lake Speed, but Morgan does. No, he falls back in line. Oh, he's coming out there. There's Ken Schrader, who is eligible for only $7,600 in Unical money because the big bonus was won last weekend at Watkins Glen by pole sitter Mark Martin. Now, once again, Morgan Shepard and Greg Sachs are side by side, and Rusty is tucked right in on the back bumper of the Country Time Ford. You know, we mentioned that Ken Schrader dropped back to 17th on that pit stop. He's back up now in the top 10, being shown in the ninth position, so he's made some pretty good moves here in these five or six laps since the car green came back out. You see Schrader ducked back in, got in line behind Rusty Wallace. This, this looks like racing the Talladega Daytona, doesn't it, Dan? These yeah, guys sure does. drafted? Well, yeah, as fast as they're going here now, the draft is, the faster you go, the more effective the draft is. And certainly when the speed's escalated here this time because of those Goodyear tires, uh, the drafting is more, comes into play more now than ever before. Well, they said that if you had a uh, trap speed at the end of the backstretch, the cars do achieve or come very, very close to 200 miles an hour. 30 laps complete, back after this. Is. They think the steering box could be broken. Uh, they didn't see anything wrong when they went up under the hood, but you ought to see it. The, the tires aren't turning, but maybe four or five degrees. It's very good. And he's just yanking on the steering wheel. Will not turn. I don't know if I'd want to be out there too long. Holy there. mackerel. Here's the interval leaderboard. You can see that Ernie Irvin is a little over a second behind Ricky Rudd, the leader. Earnhardt about a second and a half. Lake Speed almost two seconds. And Mark Martin has moved to fifth. He's 2.3 seconds behind Ricky Rudd. And the best battle on the racetrack is between Mark Martin and Dale Earnhardt. This is for third spot. And Mark Martin then is, is making a march towards the front now. He really is. That car is handling like we've seen it do so many times, just sticking right down on the bottom of the racetrack. Benny moved around Earnhardt with ease there. Now he sets his sights on the car number four, uh, Ernie Irvin. Car didn't seem to work that well on the first time when they changed tires. He was just another car, but as the tires get warm, start heating up, the car starts slowing down. He goes to the front. While we watch this action on the track, uh, we will tell you that Joe Nemechek has made numerous pit stops. They're having problem with the steering of that car. He can only turn it so far and is having a great deal of difficulty. And so they're trying to get that car sorted out. 
Well, you don't turn the steering wheel a lot on this racetrack, Bob, to make these wide sweeping turns. But as we watch Mark Martin take measure on Ernie Irvin coming off of turn two, but uh, I don't think you want to be out there too yeah. long having to wrestle with that thing yeah. at the speeds they're running here. I'd want it if I needed it, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah. So Martin has moved to second now. Irvin back to third, and Dale Earnhardt is fourth. And it is a 1.7 second interval between the leader, Ricky Rudd, and second place, Mark Martin. And uh, Jerry, Mark Martin is uh, once again showing a great deal of superiority here. Well, he's awfully strong, Bob. I talked to Steve Mills. He said, we're not going to be as tough as we were back in June, but we're going to be awfully good. He said, you know, the, the good thing about our car is that we stay consistent on the tires longer than a lot of other people. Other people are slowing down according to the stopwatch, but Martin's time about the same so he is able to pass people everyone is slowing down Steve Mills said except the five car run he's gonna be tough Rudd is tough. He is leading this race. This is only the second event, however, of the 93 season that he has led more than one lap, and that race was here in June when he won. He led 19. Right now, he has led 27 laps of the first 35. Wow, look at the race that we've got going here. We got Bodine, Elliott, Michael Walter, Ted Musgrave, Sterling Marlin, Rick Mast. Bobby Hill's in that bunch, I think. Now we Dale get to mention Dale Jarrett. <laughs> yeah, Dale was back pretty far. He caught this group of cars, but I'll tell you, it's it's tough to pass, as we've already said. He's been on the inside of Rick Mass for a couple of laps now, but just has not been able to move on around. Glad to see Rick Mass back uh, with no problems after his uh, tremendous crash at Watkins Glen last weekend. Ooh, look at that car dance up ahead there. Yeah. Rick was walking uh, rather gingerly around the pits. Uh, he was sore. He was still sore on Friday. Of course, uh, getting a workout in the race car is probably the best thing for him. And turning his head yep. very slowly. <laughs> Here's a Napa field summary. Watch for your favorite driver and where he was running just one lap ago. As we watch this, Rick Mass said he tried one of those insurance collars. You know, one of those white collars you go around your neck? But uh, he couldn't really drive the car that way, so he put a head rest up to hold his head against it. He's going to try that and see if that suffice for his problems today in his very, very sore neck. 38 cars are on the lead lap. Rich Bickle being shown out of competition. Now it's three wide coming off four. Musgrave, Marlin, and Elliott, and they're three wide behind that group. Now they're going to get six wide? No. No. <laughs> Still three wide going into the turn. That is unbelievable. They are three wide in the corner. Man, man. We saw Elliott's car wiggle a little bit from Bobby Hillen's car. Boy, it won't take just a little bit of a sniff by somebody. I could be big trouble with those guys are driving their heart out, every one of them. Oh, Bobby, don't drive up in the middle. Oh, again, did three it. wide he coming through right the up in there, no problem. And here's yeah. Michael Walter, four abreast on the inside. Well, Bill Elliott backed off, so it's only three abreast. Only three abreast. Wow. Michael Walter said, that looked like fun. Let me in there. <laughs> <laughs> then he found out when he got to turn one, it wasn't that much fun. <laughs> yeah. You can get a lot of momentum, especially when a couple of cars are running side by side in front of you. You can build it up and say, Say, man, I got some horsepower all of a sudden and take off. There's some horsepower, too. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah, now only in eight tenths of a second interval between Ricky Rudd, the leader, and Mark Martin in second. And these two cars were the stars of the race here in June. Rudd won, but only because Rick, uh, Mark Martin, who had the fastest car all day, did not go to the finish on fuel and had to make a pit stop. And we can see that Mark Martin slowly, slowly gained on that tied Chevrolet, so. We are definitely going to have us a race for the lead in just a moment. And back for third position, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth are pretty close together as Lake Speed and Ernie Irvin side by side into turn three. the racetrack is or how the bumps are shaking the camera. And folks, that's not your eyeballs, that's the camera. 
with as much freezing and thawing as there is up here in the winter time, you would think this track would be uh, uh, really rough, but Roger Penske, of course, keeps it in fine shape. And Jerry Potts, is, is Ricky Rudd having a problem of some kind? Many there have been reports of possibly some fluids leaking out of the car. I know a NASCAR official came over to speak to you, Gary. Is there a problem with the car? Well, not that we know of right now. We have to ask Ricky to check the gauges and all. He said everything looks normal. I don't know what to be at this point. So the crew still trying to figure it out. Gary Dehart and the rest of the side crew, they would surmise that it might be an overheating problem. There may be some water coming out of the overflow. So they're going to keep a close eye on the car number five. Well, those two cars have checked out on everybody else. And now Irvin tries to move up another spot, going to the inside of Morgan Shepard. Morgan tried to pass Dale Earnhardt down turn in turns one and two. Had to back up off the throttle just a little bit, which allowed Ernie Irvin to pull alongside of him. And Morgan Shepard, who started this race in fourth position, is hanging right in there, John Kernan. Yes, he is, Bob. You know, we talked about how Ernie Irvin and Lake Speed took on only two tires while the Wood Brothers opted for a four tire change. The car was a little bit tight at the last pit stop, so they took a rubber out of the right front. Eddie Wood tells me that the car's feeling really good in Morgan right now. He's just trying to hang on because they're going so fast out here. You almost never lift unless you see potential trouble. And uh, from what I can hear from you guys talking, that's apparently what Morgan saw a couple laps ago. Is that right? Or did I misunderstand? No, you, you, you heard us correctly. And now we see Morgan. He looks right behind the 28 car. And there is the leaders, Ricky Rudd and Mark Martin. And now Martin is within uh, less than a half a second from the leader, Ricky Rudd. Just gradually close. Well, I came yeah. pretty close. Three tenths. I said a half a second. It was three tenths. And right now, there's not a real push to get the lead, is there? Ned, Mark Martin doesn't have to go up past Ricky Rudd for the lead. He knows he's a fast race car. Well, yeah, he does want to get up there and take the lead one time and get him five bonus points. But uh, he, yes, he does have a five. He does have a good race car and doesn't need to strain it too much to do that. But you never know what might happen if you get those five bonus points early. It's always helpful. Average speed is 147.6 as we've completed 44 laps out of 200 in the champion spark plug 400. Okay. Still the number five car of Ricky Rudd leading the champion Spark Plug 400. Second place, the six car of Mark Martin. Then a little bit of racetrack back to a group of cars that includes three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Third place right now held by Dale Earnhardt. Well, tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, live here on ESPN, it is Sunday Night Baseball. And the Cincinnati Reds and the Atlanta Braves will hook up. The last couple of games, the uh, Braves have took the measure of the, taken the measure of the uh, Cincinnati Reds. Let's see what happens tonight. Join us live at 8 o'clock for ESPN Sunday Night Baseball from Riverfront. Morgan Shepard trying to take third spot away from Dale Earnhardt. Got inside down in turn one, could not make the pass. Now he's going back again. 
As her camera watches him, goes in the corner. Oh, he drives in, but Earnhardt drives it on the outside. And, and Morgan goes up the hill, up the hill. Don't go Morgan, too hard. somebody there. <laughs> oh, and Earnhardt really got up close to the wall as Bernie Irvin now joins the low group. Oh, you have to work so hard. You know? It's not clear now we're going in the first yep, turn. Yes. Yeah, finally. Well, we told you a few minutes ago that Joe Nemechek had been on pit road several times. Unfortunately, the car is behind the wall, and Jerry's with Joe. And Joe has climbed out of the car. Joe, they're working here beside you. What are they doing? What's the problem? Well, uh, went it down into turn three, and all of a sudden the car went straight, and it wasn't a good feeling. I knew something was wrong. It felt like either a ball joint broke or something happened to the steering. And we came in, and it, it pulled the lower A-frame mount right out of the frame. Well, you're lucky. <laughs> I, you know, we're just having some tough luck right now, both in the Bush Series and and uh, here in Winston Cup. You know, I, I feel sorry for Cintas. Uh, they stuck with us for a couple races. We gave them a good show at Watkins Glen. We were hoping to do the same here. And I'm just trying to get some experience, and uh, we'll be back. Joe Nemechek, the 1992 Bush Grand National Series champion, his third start. And, guys, a lot of people in the Winston Cup garage mentioning his name for a possible Winston Cup ride next year. Last year's Bush Grand National champion. Now we see that Morgan Shepard is in third position, followed by Dale Earnhardt, Ken Schrader, Lake Speed, Rusty Wallace, and then Ernie Irvin. And now, Jeff Gordon. Yeah, and the interval between first and third is 7.2 seconds. And while these guys are racing back there, the front two are just running single foul, pulling away. Now we see Earnhardt up high on the racetrack, followed by our pole shooter, Kenny Schrader, the Kodiak Chevrolet, and Lake Speed on the outside. So Schrader and Lake Speed still running butt side by side or nose to tail, but unfortunately it's not for the lead anymore. Morgan Shepard began to pull away a little bit from uh, from this group of cars, and Ricky Rudd holding on about the same distance to Mark Martin. And there we see Morgan Shepard. That's the distance between Mark Martin and Morgan Shepard, at least the entire, almost the entire front straightaway. Here comes Schrader trying to go by Earnhardt. Down in turn one, he's on the inside, and no, not quite, not quite. <laughs> I thought he had the position made, but Earnhardt drove back by. That's P.J. Jones on the inside, the white car. Perry Mellon car. We'll see where P.J. shows up here in the Napa field summary. He has been lapped now. He was on the lead lap last time he had a field summary, but now he has been passed by the leaders. Jeff Bodine. Well, we are uh, on the roof of that car. Remember, he had to drop to the rear of the field for the start of the race because he had some stomach flu and missed the driver introduction. So he's trying to move up from the back of the pack. And let's see, he's in 20th position right now. That's pretty doggone good. He started last, moved up to 20th. He got half up. He yep. got the rest of the half of the field. That's right. And here's the telemetry. Miles per hour. Let's see how slow he gets. 149 miles per hour was the slowest. He got down to turns one and two as he accelerates off the turn two down the back straightaway. We talked about close to 200 miles an hour on some cars. Let's see how close Jeff gets. He got to 193 at the end of the back stretch. He'll probably run a little bit faster down the front straightaway, all things being equal if the wind is, is calm today. Just ahead of him is the number seven car that's being driven by Jimmy Hensley that uh, really he owns now and will take over uh, the full-time directorship of next year. 196, 197, 199 miles an hour. Wow. Yep. They, they, drivers were saying that they're close to 200, and by golly, they are. And the interval from the leader back to 19th place, Jeff Bodine, is 22 seconds. That's about a little over half a lap. The leader is turning at a little over 41 seconds right now. Ricky Rudd. It's a little more than a half left now. Jeff on the roof, camera on top of the motorcraft board. We see the view that Jeff Bodine sees. And once again, let's see our telemetry down the front straightaway. Let's see if we can get to 200 this time, Bob. Come on, get up there. Stand yeah. up. Don't back off going into that turn. Come on, back Jeff, stand on it. Come on, Jeff. <laughs> oh, 197. <laughs> Yeah, better him than me, I'll tell you that. <laughs> now 
We've completed 55 laps now, and probably sometime between five and 10 laps from now, we'll have to start thinking about the possibility of pit stops, and we want to make sure that we're uh, able to show you all the activity in the pit, so we'll take this break and be right back. We came back that last time and showed that graphic and showed late speed in fourth. He was about eighth place then. Should we tell you that, or what do you want to do on that kind of suit? Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ESPN Speed World today at Michigan International Speedway in the Irish Hills of Southern Michigan in the Champion Spark Plug 400 Race 20 of the 1993 NASCAR Winston Cup season. It is Ricky Rudd and Mark Martin up front here in this race with 59 laps completed. And here is Wally Dallenbach making a pit stop. And we indicated that uh, the pit stops uh, were scheduled here within the next few laps, and he's among the first. Chase four tires on the Keystone Ford. He's off and running. I'm sure that the Jack Rouse crew, sitting right beside of them, will be scrambling around looking at his tire wear, seeing how his tires look, and trying to figure out what to do with Mark Martin's car when he comes in. Or well, just a great run for Wally Dollarback Jr. at Watkins Glen last weekend. He finished second right behind his teammate and the winner, Mark Martin. There's a race for fourth, and then we see Dick Trickle. He's driving the pedigree car this week. Last week it was Scott Legacy in Watkins Glen. This week it's Dick Trickle. See Farmer Jack on the front. That's a grocery store chain up here in Michigan. Scott Legacy did a good job in this car last week. Finished uh, about 13th, I think it was. So it's like they're having some, Cup race. Had some trouble there on the right rear of the car, and he was in longer than he wanted to be. Jeff Gordon and Lake Speed are side by side, and here comes Rusty Wallace. This is the car, the DuPont car that Jeff Gordon is driving is the car that he finished second here in June. They did not intend to use that car this time. He crashed his primary car in practice on Friday. Had to go to this car as a backup. Rick Wilson brings the STP Pontiac in for a stop, and now it is Gordon and Ernie Urban. Wally Dahlenbach is coming in for a second pit stop, Jerry. No, he's going behind the wall. He's going in the garage area, Jerry. Bob, Bob, what happened was Wally thought he had a tire going down because the car started to jerk and not pull coming off the turn. He came down pit road. They changed all four tires. He left pit road and found out that it was not a tire problem. Indeed, he had broken an axle. So now the Keystone Beer crew are headed back to the garage area where Wally is taking the car. They hope to change the axle and get him back in the race. But the car number 39 comes back down pit road. Once again, the pedigree car comes in. What a difference a week makes for Wally Dahlenbeck. Looks like it was a stop and go. The speed limit, as we indicated, is 65 miles an hour, and he's pitted up toward turn number four, and so he has a long way to go down pit road, and NASCAR assessing a penalty for 
speeding coming down here. See, that's one advantage to pit it down there where we see Dick, Dick Trickle's car now because if you break the speed limit, you do it coming in the pits and they hold you for 15 seconds. And here comes Earnhardt now, pit road. This starts the front runners in their pit stops. Dale Earnhardt relinquishes fourth position to come in for a stop. Jerry Punch, he's headed toward you. And, and remember, last time under caution, they changed the left side tires first, and once again, they will do it. They will switch up what they have done for years and years and won four championships at being the fastest pit crew in NASCAR. What a difference. Left side tires going on, and now Will Lynn, David Smith, and the crew, Andy Petrie, go around to the right side of the car. As the car number seven comes down, Jimmy Hensley, here's Hot Strickland, the McDonald's Ford down pit road. As Earnhardt gets four tires and is down on the way, let's check in on John Burns. Jimmy Hensley is in. It looks like it's going to be right side tires only for the USA bobsled Ford Thunderbird. Paul Andrews is going to the wood. Right sides are on. They're waiting for the last, for the fuel to come out full. Jimmy speeds away down pit road in fine fashion. He let him up and made some noise coming out, and Jimmy Horton is in in the number 32 car. Brent Bodine, Michael Waltrip, and Jeff Bodine all coming in for scheduled pit stops. And Brett Bodine has had a great run going as we watch from on the top of the Jeff Bodine car. Brett Bodine, his brother, has had a great run going today. Jimmy Spencer is in, so is Terry Labadi. Let's go to the pits and Jerry Punch. Michael Waltrip has run out of fuel. The pins all Pontiac. He radioed the pits, and I think I'm out of gas. When the car came by me, headed toward John Kernan. John, the car was not running at all as the car number 14 comes out. And here's the Monarchy Muffler 14, Bobby Allison racing, Jimmy Spencer. Here's the Motorcraft Ford coming out. And Jimmy Horton just finishing his pit on the active race. A number of cars radioing toward the pits, saying they are out of gas. And one included among those is Mark Martin of Alvin Ford Thunderbird. As it's radioed in, said, I think I'm out of fuel. The car is sputtering and missing as he will head for the pits. And Steve Hill and the crew waiting on the wall for him to come down pit road. Here is Ricky Rudd, the leader in the Tide Chevrolet. And Mark Martin's car further up pit road, very, very slowly headed toward his pits. Right side tires going on Rudd's Tide Chevrolet. And they are pushing Waltrip now. Michael Waltrip, who had run out of fuel earlier. Yes, indeed, the car was not running. The Valvoline Ford was not running as they come down pit road and now go to work on the right and left side. They're fueling Mark Martin's Valvoline Ford. Meanwhile, Rudd is out, having changed all four tires. Steve Mill and the crew trying to get left side tires now on Mark Martin's car. The winner from a week ago already having tough luck. They made a major chassis adjustment in the right rear. They're pushing the car, pushing, pushing, pushing. It fires, and Martin spins the tires and heads away. Well, that cost him a lot of time. That time he had to coast into the pits, then took a little longer in the pits than he normally would have taken. So Mark Martin is going to have a lot of catching up to do as others come in now. Morgan Shepard, Lake Speed, and Rusty Wallace all coming at you, Jerry. Rusty Wallace here getting service from his crew, and they will go to the right side. Meanwhile, Lake Speed's crew also changing right side tires on the Haviland Fort Thunderbird further toward turn one. Morgan Shepard also getting service, and John Turner is there. John? Jerry, it'll be four tire change. Right side's already on. Left side's going on right now. Morgan sitting, waiting patiently. They've already got it full of fuel. Rusty Wallace heads down pit road, speeding down. The jack goes down. Morgan Shepard up the tires, heads down pit road. Lake Speed gets out just in front of him. Just barely. Green flag pit stops being made. Some completed. Bill Elliott is finished. Ken Schrader slides to a stop, Jerry. Our pole center with a new track record at over two and a half miles per hour over the previous record. The Kodiak Chevrolet crew now going to work. Ken Howes and company having changed. Right side cars already for Kenny Schrader. Left side cars going on. Car getting full of fuel. Schrader getting very good gas mileage. Car is down the way. 20.2 seconds and he's away. I tell you what, when all this shakes down, Ricky Rudd is going to have a great lead on the field. Yes, he is. He's going to have a very, very big lead. Jeff Gordon is being shown as the leader. He has not made a pit stop yet. So Dale Earnhardt is a lap down. He's trying his best to get by Jeff Gordon in case the caution flag were to come out. He can make a lap up, and it looks like he's able to accomplish that down the back straightaway. So Gordon gets five bonus points for leading a lap, but needs a pit stop and may be coming in now. 
The 22 car of Bobby Labonte is in, so is Harry Gant, who's the defending champion of this race. And yes, indeed, Jeff Gordon is down off the banking. John Kernan will call this pit stop by Jeff. 65 miles an hour down pit road. Jeff Gordon located near the exit of pit road. Ray Evernham and the crew awaiting patiently. Look up 69 laps on the board. They were anticipating coming in on lap 70. Jeff slows it down. He'll flip it over to the left. Pull it in. It will be a four-tire change as the Ducat Chevrolet crew goes to work. Remember that great run, gas mileage, fuel mileage for this team. A second-place finish back in June. They bump up the spoiler, get a little more downforce on the rear end. The car had been just a little bit loose. They'll also take some tape off the front grill. They swing around to the left side of the car. Tires coming off new Goodyear Racing Eagle stickers going on. They are full of fuel. Down. Jeff Gordon away in 21.8. Now let's go to the road to Jerry Punch. And there, Waltrip Western Auto crew, Barry Dotson and company, finishing up the service there. Remember, Waltrip was late for driver introductions because it's 24th wedding anniversary. He's spending time with Rice Stevie. Now he gets that pit stop completed and heads back down for turn one. 21.8 seconds for DW. Waltrip goes back out. Another celebrations today. In addition to Stevie and Daryl's 24th wedding anniversary, Rusty Wallace had his 37th birthday yesterday. Robin Pemberton is celebrating his 37th birthday today. And Andy Petrie is 35 today. There's the leader, Ricky Rudd. After these green flag pit stops have been made, Rudd finds himself with a relatively comfortable lead with 71 laps completed and the average speed of the champion spark plug 400, 156.4. Very good job, John and Jer, very good. Sequence is he? Gordon. Oh no, he, he made. I'm sorry. Here. Well, he dropped into ten. So the Fords are running two, three, four. Chevrolets are running one, five, six. Get your thing out there. Okay. Bob Jenkins, Benny Parsons, Ned Jarrett, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch back at Michigan International Speedway in the Champions Park Walk 400. It is Ricky Rudd who is leading this race. There's Rusty Wallace in second. There's a race. There's the third place car. Mark Martin, Lake Speed is fourth, and uh, got a pretty good race going on for fifth. Then Ken Schrader, Morgan Shepard, and Dale Earnhardt. Red is a little over 10 seconds ahead of Rusty Wallace now. That's about uh, a little over a fourth of a lap. And that's about how much time that Mark Martin lost when he ran out of fuel yep. on the back straightaway and had to coast into the pits. Now Mark has gotten back up to third place. I'm a little confused, but that's nothing new, is it? What are you confused about? Well, why would the Earnhardt crew change the way they've been doing things for so many years and change left sides now and uh, then go to the right? I mean, why change a good thing? Well, they saw that at Watkins Glen last week when a lot of drivers changed the right sides first and then went around and changed the left side. They thought they would try that. I really can't see where it's helping, Bob. As a matter yeah. of fact, I think they slowed down about a second on their pit stop. Well, Jerry, what have you been able to learn? 
Well, there are people who believe that uh, changing the inside tires can be quicker once you get it perfected. Now, it's, it's new to these people. A lot of the crews have only done it a couple times at the road course, particularly watching this land, would you go? But also, and maybe more importantly, there's a safety measure. You don't have crew members running beyond the car when other cars are coming down pit road. They're on the inside, protected by the race car between the car and the wall. And actually, it might be a good consideration for NASCAR to think about making everyone change the inside tires first. But those crew members, seven of them, would be inside between the car and the wall when there's traffic on pit road. Good point. Yep, I hadn't thought of that, but that uh, is a very good reason. By the way, that car you see there at the bottom of your screen on the apron is Wally Dallenbach. He rejoins the race. You know, one talk about those pit stops. The the man who takes the lug nuts loose on the left side is able to do that while they're changing the right side tire. So it's hard to imagine that they could do it as quickly as uh, as it could the other way around. But yep. I don't know. But yep. I certainly agree with that safety part that Jerry mm -hmm. talked about. I think that's a that's a very valuable consideration. Yeah, we saw the Jackman, Rusty Wallace's Jackman last week when he was running out to change the left side first and had to almost leap over the hood of Rusty's car. If they were to change the right side first, in this case, the left side first, then that Jackman doesn't have to run in front of that car. A good point that Jerry Punch brought up. We have 23 cars on the lead lap with 77 out of 200 laps completed. Yeah, they're racing. They're still racing. There's Dale Jarrett, Bobby Labonte, Bill Elliott, and Jeff Bodine. Well, Bobby Labonte is shown in the 16th position, Jarrett in the 17th position. Now Jarrett takes two positions away, it looks there right now, so moving up a little bit as Jeff Bodine goes by. Ooh, <laughs> little shuffle around there. That's the 89 car of Jim Sauter, the Ford, right directly behind Jeff Bodine. That's Elliott up on the high side. Bill Elliott, most polls here at Michigan, seven, most wins, seven. He has the best average starting position at Michigan, sixth, and the best average finishing position out of all of his races, 11. Currently running in 15th spot, and he began this race from the eighth position. Oh, look at him come off that corner. <laughs> well, he saw it against Carl Wigland a little bit, able to save it. I tell you what, we're talking to the drivers and crew members down in the garage area. They were concerned about the speed here, and then these cars, 199 miles per hour, we saw going down in turn one. That's uh, seven or eight miles an hour more than we've ever seen before. They're concerned about it. Yeah, and it's getting up uh, close to the speeds they run at Daytona, really, as yep. far as the top speed is concerned. And I mentioned it is now the third fastest track in the series, uh, bumping Atlanta from that distinction. Rick Mass last November, as Mark Martin passes Rusty Wallace for a second spot. He's caught Rusty, went by. He's, still, he's back where he started in second place before he ran out of gas. The only problem, he was... Uh, a second behind now he's about 10 seconds behind here's the pit summary from last time rudd went in first came out first martin in second out second shepherd in third out fifth earnhardt in fourth now seventh and schrader went in fifth and is now running in sixth position and rudd is still over 10 seconds ahead of mark martin now he was more than 10 seconds ahead of mark martin before he was 10 seconds ahead of rusty wallace so martin apparently is gaining a little bit of it. we'll watch that a little bit as kyle, kyle Petty. Petty is about yep. to go lap down lap down let me finish what i was about to say rick mass qualified at atlanta last november at 180.1 and schrader here at 180.7 so michigan the third fastest track in the Winston Cup Series. And remember a couple of weeks ago, you and I did a speech yes. show and you asked about what to do at Talladega. Let Daytona. me set that up. Okay, set that up. I asked Benny how we can keep the cars from flying as we saw at Talladega and as we have seen at Daytona. And he says, the only thing you can do is reduce the angle of the banking at Talladega. He That's says, right. quote, you don't see the cars flying at Atlanta and Michigan, do you? Yesterday, Johnny Benson Jr. proved him wrong. Now what do you have to say? I don't know what, I really don't know what to do now. <laughs> I got to go back to the drawing board. I really felt like knocking the banks down to fix it. Obviously, I was wrong yeah, because right. Benson flew through the air yesterday. And he's okay. And one other thing we'd like to tell you, Dale Earnhardt, you probably thought Benny's second in yesterday's race. He did not. After a post-race inspection, he was declared with an illegal carburetor and dropped to third. Uh-oh. Dropped to 41st. I'm, I'm sorry, 41st. Yeah. 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 
There is Mark Martin running in second down here from lap 76 through 80. We timed the leader Rudd and second place Martin. And uh, Martin closed down the interval from 11.7 to 10.6. And very consistent laps there by Mark Martin and uh, pretty consistent by Rudd too. We gained one second in five laps, so in 50 laps, maybe he'll be back up trying to contest for the lead again if he can keep that consistency and Rudd will keep running the speed he's running. And here we go, Lake Speed trying to take over that third spot, and we've got a caution flag. And we have debris on the back stretch. This is our third caution of the day and second for debris. There was the last lap speed, 172.25. That's uh, about eight miles and eight and a half miles an hour slower, but now they do reduce speed under this caution. I'll tell you, a lot of drivers welcome this caution because they had to make those green flag pit stops. Didn't have time to make a lot of adjustments on the car. There were some of them were fighting them out there, so they welcome the opportunity to make a pit stop during caution and can make adjustments to the cars. Besides that, to catch up to Ricky Rudd. Yeah, yeah right. right. That's the biggest thing that caught up to Ricky Rudd. The 39 car of Dick Trickle, we will tell you, has gone to the garage area while we watch the pace car slow down the the field with Rudd right behind and Hutt Strickland. Yeah, Hutt uh, and Kyle Petty, we saw them go a lap down not too long ago, so a tough break for them that uh, they'd gone that lap down and caution didn't come out a little bit earlier. The top 10 now after 84 laps are Rudd, Martin, Wallace, Speed, Shepard, Schrader, Earnhardt, Jeff Gordon, Irvin, and Rick Mast. Field out in turn number three. They want Rick Mass doing a pretty good job with his sore neck out there. No kidding. It really is. He's, well, he's running 10th turn. Yeah, we'd seen him earlier in a big pack of cars back there, and he just went right on through that pack of cars and drove away from them. Made a good green flag pit stop and moved up into the top 10. Right now, remember that top 10 that I just gave you because here they come for pit stops, and we'll see how they shake out after their stops. Everybody on the lead lap coming down. Jerry Punch is down there. We're going to stack them three deep for you folks. Three pit stops you're going to watch on your television screen. Top of the screen, Ricky Rudd, the leader. Car number five. Middle is the Valvoline Ford in car number six. And the 28 car, Lake Speed, the Haviland Ford. Right side tires for the car number 28. Likewise, they've already completed right side tires on Ricky Rudd. And they're finishing up the right side. Now going to the left side on the car number six. Left side now, the car number 28. Rudd is down and away. And the car number six is down and away. And Lake Speed getting his service completed. They had to back up because they had a hose. The car was up on the hose. And now on the left side up there. Let's check in with John Curtin. Jerry Lake thought he was taking right side tires only. He started to go only. They had already jacked up the left side. The lug nuts were already off. They stopped him really quick. Joey Knuckles was coming around, and he ran over the air hose. He got stuck on the air hose. He had to sit there, tried to back up the car. They had the left side up on the jack. They had to let it back down. He had to back it up. Finally, after a long, long time in here, Lake Speed leaves with four new tires. So a lot of track position lost there by Lake Speed as the caution remains out at the Brooklyn Michigan, Michigan International Speedway. Here's a replay now of Lake's pit stop. Jack goes down. He starts to go. He's sitting on the hose. So they go ahead and change the left sides. No, they decide to back it up. Now they've got to jack it up and change the tires because the lug nuts are off. Valuable time lost, and he will come back on pit road this lap. Back with more live coverage from the Champion Spark Plug 400 in a moment. Okay. Bill yeah, he had a good. He had a good pit stop. Make right under his feet. Thank you. If I want anything, if I want anything, then fine. Thanks. Excuse me. You got it. Is that what line? Right down. Fine. Good time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is this a stop and go? We're running over the air hose. No. 
Okay. Sorry. It might be when he and Irving got together over there. Could be. Yeah, because they did touch. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, hello? hello. 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 Hey, John. Yeah. Hello. Whenever they, uh, the, whenever he started to pull away or something, but I mean, whenever uh, he started to pull away and got on the air hose, and Joey like grabbed the air hose up and tried to yank it out from under the tire, he got caught on that bottom lip of the front of that uh, right front fender, and that pulled it out, and they had to bend it back in. Oh, okay. Well, I guess. ESPN Speed World is being brought to you by Pontiac and your nearby Pontiac dealer. We are driving excitement by Goodyear number one in tires and by Napa because there are no unimportant parts. Jeff Gordon has uh, put himself up front and will be the leader when they come down. The rookie points reflect his lead in the standings. Bobby Labonte with uh, 171 in second, then Kenny Wallace and P.J. Jones, who got a late start in the rookie battle, is fourth right now. And Todd Bodine, uh, I think his intentions are to run the remainder of the year. Don't you think so, Ned? Yeah, that's the plan, that he would run the balance of the year, which would, uh, if he hasn't declared himself a rookie this year, he just simply would never run for rookie of the year because running the balance of the season would would uh, disqualify him. He would run too many races to be eligible for a rookie of the year next year. Jerry Punch? I asked the folks this morning at the Max Race Cards who run the Rookie of the Year program with NASCAR or actually sponsor the Rookie of the Year program, and they told me that, indeed, Todd Bodine had declared He'll only be able to run 12 races, and you get judged on your best 15 starts, so he may not have a shot in sheer numbers, but if he's impressive and can win a couple short tracks, possibly, he could pull it off. Now let's take a look at the pit stop summary. Ricky Rudd in first, comes out in second position. Mark Martin second to fourth. Rusty stays in third. Lake Speed, look at the loss that he had. Fourth place in, 14th out, and Morgan Shepard in fifth out in fifth position. John has a comment on the leader of the race, Jeff Gordon. When you saw everyone else take on four tires, Ray Evernham decided they'd gamble, take on right side tires only, and get that car to the front. Remember, he led a couple of laps earlier because of gas mileage. Now they have him up front, and we'll see if he can hold back his teammate, Ricky Rudd. This is the ninth race that Jeff Gordon has led at least one lap. They head for turn number one. He still is in the lead. Ricky Rudd and Rusty Wallace close in. They want Rudd just didn't close up on the rear bumper, did he? As Mark Martin pulls on the outside of Rusty Wallace, trying to take, what is it, third place away? Yep. Folks, we just want to show you what to watch this.
Jeff Bodine coming close again to that 200 mile an hour mark in the tri -oval. Got to 199. He is in a lot of traffic, however. He's running in 11th position. And here now is Ricky Rudd making a challenge for the lead on his teammate, Jeff Gordon. Coming off with a fourth corner into the tri -oval. Rudd goes way low on the track, gets that white line, and let's see if he gets, yes, he does. There's the average speed, 149.8, and the race record is 125.4. Wow, we've had, what, three caution flags so far? And still averaging 150 miles per hour. What are we going to talk about that half hour we've got to fill the end of the show yet? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about, let those guys talk about that fast speed they've been running, I guess. The cars on the move are Rick Maston, one, and Ernie Irvin in four. Now here's Martin alongside Jeff Gordon for second position. Racing with an impressive performance. Remember, they finished 1-2 here in June, and at the moment, they're 1-2, maybe 1-3 at times, Jerry. <laughs> and Bob, last lap, when Ricky Rudd came all the way to the bottom of the racetrack and passed Jeff Gordon and slid right back up in front of him by about six inches, Rick Hendricks hit him beside him. His knees buckled. He went down to the ground on both knees, put his face in his hands, and shook his head and said, man, my race team could have gone away there in a heartbeat. And then he had a big smile. He's never been liking it, but these guys are out there each other in their own race car to win the race. <laughs> I think I would be uh, sweating a two down there. There he is. There's Rick Hendrick. I was told he had to get up at 5 o'clock this morning to fly up here to watch his team's race. And here goes Mark Martin trying to take the lead. If he can, this caution flag would really be a break. He, oh! Uh -uh. <laughs> He was all over the track coming off the corner, but he gets it straight down and down the back stretch. He pulls ahead of Rudd, but Ricky maintains his position, now moves back ahead of Mark. All right, Martin's will try it again. Here comes Morgan Shepard creeping up on him. That's right, while these cars are racing, the guys behind them are able to catch them. And we can see who Jeff Gordon's going to go with. That's no surprise, is it? No, he's going with his buddy. Teammate Ricky Rudd pushes him right back out into the lead. By the way, the third member of this team, Ken Schrader, is running seventh, and Morgan Shepard slides up the race track and comes very close to Jeff Gordon as they go down the back stretch. It looked like Morgan wasn't going with anybody. He was going to try to work for himself in that little group of cars there. Rudd, Martin, Shepard, and Gordon. I don't think we mentioned that Jeff Gordon crashed in practice on uh, Friday. This is his backup car. I don't like to listen to you anymore. Well, I have I sometimes have a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> We're near the halfway point of this race. And we've got a blown engine down in turn one. Jimmy Horton. Remember down in Talladega about two or three weeks ago, that terrible flipping. And then Morgan Shepard takes over third place. Morgan Shepard is third. Second place belongs to Mark Martin as Ricky Rudd continues to lead the champion Spark Plug 400. A deal. A deal. Mm -hmm.
Still a great battle up front here in Michigan as Mark Martin and Ricky Rudd battle for the lead. Rudd once again goes to the inside in the second turn, but Rudd has the better momentum up high. They come off the corner down the back stretch, and now Rudd to the inside, and uh, Martin looks outside, but even that didn't work. Rick Mast, who we mentioned a few minutes ago as one of the fastest cars on the racetrack, has come in. He's on his way back, and Jerry knows why. Bob, unscheduled stop for a flat right front tire for the skull uh, efforts for Rick Mast, the Richard Jackson car. He heads back to turn one. Tough break. They will certainly were not scheduled for another pit stop for about 30 laps. And now he pulls up in front of the leader as they head for turn one. He was in eighth spot. And look at this three abreast racing. That is Earnhardt, Schrader, and Wallace. Schrader takes a spot away. He's, got, he's the guy going forward. Rusty Wallace, the guy going backwards right now. That's for fifth spot. Yep, moves into fifth. Earnhardt is sixth. Wallace seventh. Jeff O'Dyne has now moved up to eight. There's a side to side battle for ninth between Dale Jarrett and Ernie Irvin. There's Rick Mast. They thought the right front tire was a problem. Evidently, that was not the problem because he is still off the pace. It is 2 o'clock Eastern time, and for those of you just joining us, welcome to Michigan International Speedway. We're right exactly, well, one lap past the halfway mark. 101 laps have been completed, and uh, the leader at the moment is Ricky Rudd. Mark Martin is second. We've had a great race so far. Here is R uh, Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt still going at it. They're racing for sixth place. There is Rudd and Martin. And Jerry, uh, Rick Mast back in again. What's the problem? Bob, last time he came in, radio, he thinks he had a right front tire going down. They changed the right side tires. He went back at it. As Benny Parsons mentioned, did not come up to speed. The vibration that he thought was a right front tire was still there. He came back down pit road and changed left side tires. Now he's pulled away. You can see if possibly that may have the problem. He gathers up some speed down the back stretch as we continue to watch this battle for sixth position, and the caution is out once again. Oh. And again, we don't see any obvious reason for it. It is again debris on the racetrack. There is metal on the track in turn number two. So the fourth caution comes out. Three have been for debris on the racetrack. One for a spin involving Todd Bodine. Here's the Western Auto race summary. Ricky Rudd has led 82 of the first 100 laps. There are 21 cars on the lead lap, five leaders, nine lead changes, three cautions. This is the fourth. 18 laps have been under caution so far. The average is a little over 151 miles an hour. Those that have led a lap so far today and picked up the five bonus points include Ricky Rudd, Jeff Gordon, Ernie Irvin, Ken Schrader, and Lake Speed. Those out of the race include Rich Bickle, Todd Bodine, and Jimmy Horton. The Mechanic of the Year standing show Andy Petrie from Dale Earnhardt's team on top. Tony Glover from Ernie Urban's is second. Steve Meal working for Mark Martin is third in the standings. Frank Edwards on the 25 Ken Schrader car is fourth and Buddy Parrott from Rusty Wallace's crew is fifth in the standings for the Western Auto Mechanic of the Year. I think we're going to see some more pit stops, don't you, Bob? Well, I, I think so, Benny, especially since we have gone past the halfway mark, and now they would be in a window that many of them could make it with one more pit stop after this if it should go green the rest of the way. So I think they definitely will take advantage of this caution. Today. Can they run at this speed? You think they can run 45 laps then? Yeah, some of them can. Really? Some of them, I believe, can. Wow. Yeah. So that would that just might be another deal where the gas mileage once again. Yep. Would be a factor. Everybody on the lead lap comes in. We're once again going to give you a three-way split on the screen so you can keep track of the pit stops of three different drivers. Jerry Punch has the honors. Chev Chevrolet on top. That's Ricky Rudd. In the middle of your screen is the Valvoline efforts of Mark Hart and the car number 21, the Cisco car, just pulling into the Wood Brothers pit right now. Right side tires on Morgan Shepard's 21. They have already changed right sides on Mark Martin's car and Ricky Rudd's car. Left side going up on the tide, Chevrolet. Left side of the Valvoline Ford. Looks like the Valvoline Ford is off the jack first. He is down and away. The car is Car number 21 still in. Rusty Wallace. Now Ricky Rudd begins to move. 
And now the car number 21 is down off the jack and away. But a great pit stop by Steve Mill and the Valvoline crew to get Mark Martin out first. Ted Musgrave was the first car out of the pits. But Ted, isn't he a lap down? Mm, no, he no, isn't. No, he isn't. I beg your pardon. He was uh, he a, was, yeah, he was about to go a lap down before yeah. that one caution before. He was in 11th position, but as a great stop comes out in the lead as Michael Waltrip comes right up on the back pumper of the Pontiac pace car. We will be back with more live coverage from Michigan International Speedway and the Champion Spark Plug 400. Showing Terry Labonte out too. Here, Bill. Labonte. Yes. Really? Yeah, he is. Apparently, Rudd has got either a, a blown head gasket or a crack in the block. It's overheating. Oh, They're going to no. put some stop leak in at this time. They're going to raise the hood and try to put some liquid glass in the radiator along with some more water. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a week from Saturday, right? Yeah, okay. Okay. I got you. So evidently they was he was losing a little water earlier on. We can also talk about Tuesday's special with me and Benny at the Speedway in Saturday Night Thunder. 68 cars. Yeah, you're right. Hey, I care about it. I got friends and family. down Thursday at 730 a week from Saturday night they will be knocking down the walls of Bristol International Speedway in Tennessee will present live coverage of the Bud 500 at 730 that's a week from this coming Saturday August 28th here on ESPN a couple of things that you might look for between now and then however Benny and I will have a special program from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway uh, come Tuesday to report on the activity there the practice that they have scheduled tomorrow and Tuesday look at the crowd that's gathered here boy it's a nice hot sunny uh, humid day everybody is enjoying the action and of course Saturday Night Thunder and the Fastmasters next Saturday night. Well, Jerry Punch, uh, Ricky Rudd was in for another pit stop, and he was in for quite a while. What's the problem? They raised the hood and put some water in the radiator. One of the crew members said they were, they were going to possibly put some stop leak or liquid glass in the water. I spoke with Gary Dehart, the crew chief, and Rick Hendrick. He said the car apparently has temperature fluctuating up and down. Now, while it was sitting here, there was not there was some water that came out the overflow, but there's no water now coming out on the racetrack. There's NASCAR has been watching the car very carefully, so they're not really sure exactly what the problem may be. Some speculate it could be a, a head gasket, possibly a small crack in the block. They hope not. Well, our pit summary will indicate how much he lost. Ricky Rudd came into the pits in first position. He comes out 19th. Mark Martin stays in second. Shepard third to fifth. Gordon from fourth stays there. And Ken Schrader uh, was uh, in fifth and comes out in seventh position. Now, the leader not reflected on that pit summary, Ted Musgrave. You know, they talked about Ricky Rudd losing some moisture early, early in the race. Remember that? Yeah, so evidently he was losing just a little bit of water all race long. Man, oh man, what a tough break for Rudd. We're going racing, Bob, in just a second. Yes, we are. Pace car pulls in. Kyle Petty alongside Ted Musgrave. He wants to get a lap back. And here we go. The green flag is out. Back to racing at Michigan. Well, there are four abreast back there. See Jimmy Spencer down on the inside. Well, it's not unusual to see a fan out here on this front straightaway for trial. Try to get position going into turn one. Musgrave chased by Martin. Rudd 
Hamlin is way back there someplace. He's 19th in the standings, but there are lap cars between him and the leader. There's a lot of cars between him and the leader. A lot of really fast race cars between him and the leader. Ooh, and Man, he hasn't been seeing anything like this all day long. And here's a change for the lead. Mark Martin has not led this race today. He now takes the lead. He comes by the start finish line and now he gets credit for leading. Mark has led at least one lap in 14 of the 20 races this year and is second only to Dale Earnhardt in laps left. The lap leaders and bonus points. Rusty Wallace trying to take second away and Jeff Gordon almost got in the back of Musgrave. Had to go way up the gray stuff. Great battle behind the leader. Two abreast for second and two abreast for fourth. That's what Mark Martin loves. Ooh, look at Morgan come on the inside, making three abreast. He backs out, or does he? Yep. Yep. He said, hey, I got in there a little bit too quick. I better back out and regroup here. Morgan has a big open house next Saturday that he wants to invite everybody to at his shop in near Conover, North Carolina. He's trying it again, three abreast, but this time he makes the pass. Goes by Rusty and Jim Gordon to take over third place. Shepard strong here, moves to yeah. third. That said go forward is fast. The Wood Brothers have had fast race cars here at the Michigan International Speedway. Here he goes for second. He's alongside Musgrave. He's got it. He pulls up in front. Jeff Gordon tried to come along, but he couldn't quite muster up enough speed going into that turn. Now he'll come down the inside as Earnhardt comes down on the inside two, making a three abreast off that turn. They take care of the 55 car of Ted Musgrave, and Earnhardt goes up into what, third. Looks like he's running third place. The 89 car of Joe Nemechek has been in the wall. Uh, he's Jim down. Sauter. Jim Sauter, rather. He's down off the banking and on pit road, so we'll have no caution. And Terry Labotte, who had been behind the wall for a while in the Kellogg's Cornflex Chevrolet, is going back out on the track. Sauter uh, banged up the rear end of that car. Real good. They're pushing that car towards the garage area. He's done for the day. Car's a little shorter than it was earlier today. As we have mentioned it, Rick Mast, who we were following there just before the caution came out, has taken the Skull Classic forward behind the wall. They're working on it right now. Dale Jarrett behind Ken Schrader and alongside Ted Musgrave. Looks yep. like Musgrave, those two tires are just not working there. They no. need to change four. Yep, it, it looks that way. They only took on two. Gave him great track position, but now he's beginning to slip back a little bit. I believe he's in seventh, isn't he, then? Who? Uh, Dale. Dale Jarrett? Jarrett. Yep. They just moved him up to, yeah. to seven. In fact, they had a great pit stop. I've uh, uh, criticized those guys sometime earlier in the year when they didn't have good pit stops. I've got to commend them. The right. last time out, there was 19 and a half seconds. So. Well, there is Lake Speed running alongside Ricky Rudd. Kyle Petty moves over to give those guys a lot of room as they go by him down in turn one. Well, they tried to. Ooh, didn't give them enough room. Not quite right there. Ricky decides that's not smart to stick the nose up in there. I thought Kyle was moving over. He was just going down to the bottom like we've seen so many now guys. He does. Now he got out of the way. Yeah. He really got out of the way. That time. <laughs> and Kyle will do that. He, he is very, very good at moving over, letting the leaders go. And when he's up there running for the lead, he expects the same courtesy. Sometimes don't get it, but you know, nevertheless, does it when they come to him. Rudd and um, Lake Speed, I believe, are in a battle for 12th position here. We'll check that out on Napa Field Summary. Bernie Airman is 10th. Yeah, that's the battle for 12. Speed and Rudd. That Rudd has right now, as you can see. Some good racing going on back in that group of cars. You can see there that Harry Gant, the defending champion of this race, is a lap down. He, too, won it last year on fuel mileage. Be tough for him to do today, though. Yep. Especially being a lap down. The five car, we understand, continues to dump fluid on the racetrack. Jerry told us that they have a radiator problem that is uh, causing some water to leak onto the track and it apparently is still doing so. Their effort to seal it up has not worked, apparently. So 114 laps now completed out of 200. It's still Mark Martin leading this race here at Michigan International Speedway. Back in a moment.
Gage just pegged. He's out of water. He's coming oh, down. Boy. strong. No, no he's, oh, he's going to be there a while. He's done for the day this way. I think he's probably done about right around the inside, just restricted the points. He's bailing out the back end. Mm -hmm. Jeff Gordon trying to pass Earnhardt, coming off two. There he goes. Or third. Come <laughs> 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 on, well, Kenny, that's your teammate. There you go. Raider's still pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth right here in the Champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International. It's Earnhardt on the high side, Jeff Gordon below him, then Rusty Wallace and Ken Schrader. They have been going at it for several laps. Ricky Rudd has come into the pit area. Did he go behind the wall? No, he went back on Did the he? racetrack. He stayed in the pits a couple of laps as they tried to put some water in the car. They did managed to get some water in it. He did go back on the racetrack, but I'm sure he'll have to run at a reduced speed if he's going to finish the race. So Rudd will not make it two in a row here at Michigan. Now he's lost a couple of laps in the pits, and, and as Benny said, he'd probably have to go slow out on the track. So. There once again are the teammates, the Hendrick teammates running together, Gordon and Schrader. Comes Dale Jarrett. Yeah. Trying to get up in this race. Michael Walters, the Benzoa project, is a lap down. Yeah, he ran out of gas, and that's and, right. And that's what got Michael to lap down. He's 20th, Michael Waltrip is. But running with those in the top 10. Yeah, his car has run good all along, but a little miscue running out of gas is costing him. And then they had to push the car. It wasn't just a matter of being able to start it up and drive it away. They had to push the car to get it started. And Earnhardt. This car is hanging in there, currently running third spot. Rusty Wallace is fourth, Jeff Gordon is fifth, and Kenny Strader sixth. Dale Earnhardt has not led a lap today. Currently the driver with the most leader lap bonus points with 120. He has led the most laps in nine of the first 20 races of 1993. This is not a race for the lead. Mark Martin is a leader, and Morgan Shepard is in second place, but this is by far the best race on the racetrack. Boy, it has not been a particularly pleasing weekend there for the car on the bottom side of the racetrack. That's Terry Labonte crashing during his qualifying run, not able to get into the race legally yesterday. He took a provisional. Here is the interval between first and third. Martin and Earnhardt. It's two and a half seconds. And no, a driver hasn't been named for that 14 car yet, I don't believe, but we talked about the Kellogg's car, the 14 car. We believe that John Andretti will be driving the car, however, uh, at Indianapolis tomorrow and Tuesday. We'll, we'll see. There is Lake Speed and Sterling Marlin, who you remember quite a while ago were mired back in a big pack of cars, but now they've worked themselves out and are uh, running pretty well. This is for 10th spot. I think they might be gaining on that pack of cars we were watching there a little bit ago, but they're still pretty far back behind them. But once they got through some of the other traffic, they are able to pick up a little bit. And Ernie Irvin directly in front of the 28 car. There he is. We see Ernie in the shot.
Looks like that late speed might be gaining on Ernie Irvin. Yeah, it does. Looks like he's closing in a little bit. Ernie Irvin started this race in 24th position. There's Lake Speed. He had problems on a pit stop. You see Ernie running way high on the racetrack. He has searched around, Danny. I've been watching him a little bit, and don't think that car is really set up to the best as Ricky Rudd comes back in the pits. It just is not handling. You search for a place to go on the racetrack that it'll feel good. But it, I don't think he's found one yet. Still running good, don't yeah. get me wrong, but it, it still is not like we normally see that four car. And I was talking to Tony Glover yesterday. We saw in that graphic that this car started 24th, Ernie Irvin, I'm talking about the Kodak Film Chevrolet. And I think Tony said that was the third time that they'd failed to qualify in the top 20 as we see Jeff Gordon trying to get by Rusty Wallace. And not able to make the pass. And Ricky runs, we said he's back in the pits, and Jerry punches down there, Jerry. Well, they've been trying to bleed some air out of the radiator system, and now Eddie Dickerson and the crew have gone beside him to the Valvoline team, Steve Mill, offering them a radiator cap with 29 to 31 pounds pressure on it. So they're putting a different radiator cap on. They have tried to fill it up with water and stop leak. The temperature continues to fluctuate between 210 at 230 degrees. So they have him back on pit road. They're adding more water. They've changed the radiator cap. They don't see any water at all coming out of the left side exhaust pipe. But it is pushing some water out of the car in the overflow going around the racetrack. And so they continue to try to work here and solve the problem. What a tough break for the tied team. Battle for ninth here. Leg speed on the bottom and Ernie Irvin on the top. Lake Speed is coming back up through the pack. He had a lot of iron to pass after he came out of the pits later, had to go back in, but he's uh, working his way back up there. Couldn't quite make that pass, though. Looks like he's a little bit faster than Ernie Irvin right now, but it looks like his car needs to run where Ernie is running. Yeah. And it makes it very difficult to pass. Yep, he needs the whole racetrack. To, even though this track is very, very wide, we've talked about that so many times, there's still one spot around this racetrack that you can go faster than you can anywhere else, and he needs all of that space. Here he comes again. Started second, currently 10th. His uh, highest was the lead on lap 20. His lowest position so far has been 20th on the 90th lap, and there his position, as you can see, has changed now tonight. And he does take this spot away. Ted Musgrave would be the next car that he would zero in on. There's our leader, Mark Martin. And you can see why that we were looking at the other races because he is a good lead over the 21 car. Yeah, Jeff. he is all by himself with a comfortable lead on second place Morgan Shepard back with more from Michigan after this. So if it stays green, I mean, could be a replay of June. Yeah. I, yeah, Martin will have to stop twice, 150 and 196. And by the way, uh, Benny or Ned, Tyler Meal, Steve Mill's 11-year-old son, is uh, pretty busted up. He got hit by a jet ski wind. He has a broken back and a fractured skull. Ooh. And Steve said, if you get a chance, please say hello to Tyler. He'll be watching. It certainly would lift his spirit. All right. You can also mention Ernie's new arrival, huh? Okay.
Mark Martin enjoys about a 1.5 second interval on Morgan Shepard. Dale Earnhardt is 3.2 seconds behind. Wallace three and a half and Jeff Gordon is 3.7 seconds. So some good racing back there for third through fifth as Mark Martin sets the pace here. But again, the thing that we're thinking about is he did this in June and it ended up that he had to make a pit stop late in the going and we wonder if uh, that could be the situation here again this afternoon. Well, what do you think? I don't know. I don't either. I bet those guys in the pits know something about it. John Kernan, what have you been able to learn about all this? Well, it does look like Mark Martin will have to make two more stops. And talking with Jerry Punch, who's down in his pit, says he'll have to pit about lap 150 and about 196, 195, with about four or five laps to go. Now, the Wood Brothers, they are getting about 50 and a half laps, so they will have no problem. They'll pit anywhere between lap 150, uh, 153, 155, and they'll be able to go the rest of the way. Jeff Gordon, 51 laps. They pit it on lap 105, so no problems for Gordon or Shepard to go the rest of the way on just one more fuel stop. So these guys down here have got their fingers crossed, and we don't see any yellow flag between now and the end of the race. Yeah, that, of course, will be a very important factor, whether or not there are any more caution flags. If so, it's going to throw the whole thing out the window. But, it, again, looks like it could come down to who has the best fuel mileage. And we're going to be tough with to two races and one race track in a year. By the way, we see Mark Martin go by. Steve Mill, the crew chief on Mark Martin's car. I did a radio show with him Wednesday, and his son Wednesday was involved in a what is it, Wave Runner? Uh, that jet ski. Jet yes, ski. Probably more. He's 11 years old. Tyler, and either his ski ran over him or another ski ran over him, and uh, I totally broke his back. And, uh, yeah, he's quite banged up, and, and we, he banged his head up. Be a concussion, maybe a fracture, but at least a concussion. And Tyler has to be bedridden for about uh, four or five days. He's got to stay in bed, Tyler. Watch the race. Get you some moving. Rent some moving. Relax. It'll be okay. Mind your mommy, your doctors, and your nurses, right? Uh, <laughs> Take Jeff, it Bo easy. Jeff Bodine has uh, been, well, losing positions in the last few laps. Maybe sit down on the inside of the racetrack. Let's see where he comes up. He's 13th right now. He's not taking a very aggressive posture going around the racetrack. He's moved over on the inside. Well, there he moved back up on the outside. They followed Bill Elliott into that turn. Jimmy Spencer went down the inside of him, but Spencer couldn't quite make the pass. As we look out Jeff's windshield there. Napa Field summary. The Bodines running in 13th and 15th. You see 19 cars are still in the lead lap. Yeah, so he is taking a more aggressive position now. Watch the car as it bounces on the, yeah, on the bumps up in turns three and four here at Michigan. And here he comes directed towards us. Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace are third and fourth. And they're gaining on the second place car, Morgan Shepard. Yep, slowly, they slowly. Yep, they sure are. Mark Martin seems to be pulling away a little bit from uh, Morgan Shepard, but Earnhardt and the Rusty are gaining. crashes <laughs> a couple of cars go by on the inside and almost crashed again man he's shown 15th but i think he lost a couple of spots there uh, when he got a little loose let's watch him as he goes down at turn one there's jeff bodine on the outside of him and watch as labani just gets the car out of shape almost crashes oh my gosh Man, a great job of saving a race car by Bobby Labonte. That wasn't a rookie save. That was a, that yeah. was a save of a veteran. Sure that was. Great that job. Was great. Let's take a look at what we project to be the next pit stops for Mark Martin, who was last in on lap 104. We predict he'll be in at 151. Shepard also was in on lap four. We predict 152. And Earnhardt at 149. Jerry Punch is with Ricky Rudd. Well, Ricky, you put it behind the wall, but you shook Rick Hendrick's hand with a big smile. It was a rocket while it lasted. Well, it's awful good to get in a good race car. We haven't had many cars like this this year. It's just a shame it was puking water out. I don't know what happened to it, but it drove good in the corners. It ran good down the straightaway, and it was too good to be true. Things were, things were so good, and 
I could run about 95% of what I could really do and keep the guys behind me. So it's very rare to get a car like that. Any idea what the problem actually was inside the engine? Well, I think it's something like a cracked cylinder head. Could be a head gasket. They could fill it with water and it lasts about five, ten laps and start blowing all the water out again. So whatever's happening is pressurizing the water system through the motor. So head gas and a cracked head. Tough break for Ricky Rudd, who dominated the first half of this race here today. Thank you, Jerry. Here is now Earnhardt and Martin both catching up to Morgan Shepard. Looking out, Morgan's the car toward Earnhardt and Wallace. Dale will go to the inside in the third and fourth turns. Whoa, boy, that was close, close, close. And I tell you what, Rusty Wallace is right directly on Earnhardt's rear bumper, just inches away he was going off that corner. There's Rusty right nailed to his bumper. And Morgan Shepard is running an entirely different line down in one and two, other than rather than he's and Earnhardt gets a good run on the high side now pulls alongside Morgan Shepard. Oh, I think they touched. Just a little bit. Earnhardt goes to second, or does he? No, here comes Morgan back because Earnhardt needs to be up there, and he's going up there. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Martin leads, now it's Earnhardt second, Shepard third, and Rusty Wallace fourth. Mark has led 30 of the 137 laps. Three just broke. Yes, they cut it. Or they go against Morgan there and cut it. Might have, Ned. That's a good point. So he'll definitely have to make another stop. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Yep. Hmm. You know, uh, talk about Mark Martin going from to having to stop on 151. Mm -hmm. If he can run to 152, it'd be 48 laps each stop. Yeah. Yep, but I just stopped. Aaron Hart, they both yeah. they definitely had to stop. Him. Four tires. Oh, they got the man around here taking these right look notes off just like they used to have the left man, too. I didn't even yeah. see that before. That was a dumb statement on my part. I know it's coming, yeah. This is for second. Dale Earnhardt just lost a lap. Just as he took second position, the car slowed, coming off of corner number two. He had a flat tire, came in and changed it, rejoins close to where he was running, but a lap down. Jerry Punch was there when Dale came in for the stop. Had no choice at all, Bob. The right front tire completely flat. Then on the inner liner, they have pulled the tire. The tire off as it was rubbing, possibly rubbing a fender. Is now caution is being shown to the field. Hut Strickland, Jerry, right here in the trioval. Rick Wilson also involved. Strickland's car is in the grass, just off of quarter number four in the trioval, and he has made contact with the wall because the left front of it is banged up pretty good. Well, that's a tough break for Dale Earnhardt. The others were going to have to stop within the next eight to ten laps for regular pit stops. Now they'll get to do it under caution. He's left down. Now the question is, can any car here run 55 laps? That's about what they'll have to run once mm -hmm. the green comes back out. Yeah. And this is really a shame because uh, McDonald's, a lot of McDonald's people here today watching, people here today watching Hud Strickland run. Hud was running in 27th position, a lap down. The spotters who are perched over here to our left up on top of the main grandstand are extremely important to the drivers. And you just can't imagine how much contact there is and how much conversation between the spotter and the driver, making sure the driver knows exactly what's going on on the racetrack. They were running over to Hutch Strickland, but he moving around. It looks he's got the wind in that down. And I think that's the signal. I think the NASCAR has told the drivers, if you're okay, put the wind in that down, we'll know that. And we see Hutt bouncing out of the car. Let's take a look at the schedule coming up here on ESPN the rest of the afternoon and evening at 3.30, Surfer Magazine. 4 o'clock, the Autolite Nationals NHRA Drag Race.
The Thriftway ATP Tennis at 5 o'clock. Sports Center at 7. Baseball tonight at 7.20. Join us for Major League Baseball and the Atlanta Braves and Cincinnati Reds from Riverfront at 8 and then Sports Center at 11. Once again, those on the lead lap come in for stops. It's lap 142. Mark Martin leads them down. Jerry Punch. And we'll stack them three deep again for you. Ford, Pontiac, and Chevrolet. Mark Martin on top, middle of your screen is Rusty Wallace. And the rookie, Jeff Gordon, getting right side tires on his DuPont Chevrolet. Now left side tires on Mark Martin's Valvoline Ford. Likewise, working on the left side of the other cars. Left side on car number 24. Martin's falling down and away. Here's Rusty Wallace and Wallace and Martin almost run together down pit road. And they are still door to door, headed back for turn one as a drag race down toward the pit road. I hope neither one uh, exceeded the speed limit because they were racing coming down. <laughs> I tell you what, can you imagine racing with a speed limit? And that's those guys, <laughs> they looked like they were trying so hard not to break the speed limit. Let's watch this. The cars will start moving. Here comes Rusty on the outside of the black car, and Martin Martin. almost runs into oh. him. Rusty gets off the gas, and now they're racing and can't break the speed limit. And we can see that Mark Martin beat Rusty to the line by just a little bit. Rusty comes out ahead of him. Mark Martin is just pulling out and look. Takes him over to the left a little bit. Now the line down here at the end of the uh, pit road is the determining factor. Whoever leads across that line is the person that uh, gets to uh, go to the lead on the racetrack. Well, we are under caution now for our fifth time this afternoon. This because of an accident involving Hut Strickland. We'll be right back. Good. I swear it looked like Mark beat him to the line. I thought it sure yeah. did. Oh, good. Okay. Track facts are brought to you by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. Sometimes it's the seemingly simple devices that can make a difference for a Winston Cup race team. If you'll notice in the window opening beside me, there's mounted a small aluminum box. Now you won't see this box on race day because it's not allowed, but it's very vital when it comes to testing given the limited testing time allowed for Winston Cup teams. It's a photoelectric cell receiving unit. You see, in the old days when they tested, they'd go to the racetrack and use stopwatches. There'd be some disagreement as to who had the best time or who was the most accurate time. The driver would run a couple laps, come down and say, how'd I do? And they would tell him he'd go back out and run a few more laps. Well, now with this system developed by Unipro out of St. Augustine, Florida, all the guesswork is gone. You simply set up a tripod at the start-finish line with a light beam. As the car comes by, this cell picks up the light beam. The driver has a digital readout right in front of him which tells him exactly to one hundredth of a second what his lap time was. He can change the groove each lap, see his lap time, and know instantly what the quick way around the racetrack could be. Certainly, this little system here helps to maximize their time when it comes to testing. And speaking of testing, we know that 35 NASCAR Winston Cup teams will be at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway tomorrow and Tuesday. The question is, 
how many thousand people are going to be there watching. They're expecting a huge crowd for the uh, test in preparation for the Brickyard 400 next August. Uh, here's Jerry Punch with a report on Mark Martin. Remember June here at Michigan, what happened with Mark Martin? Well, I just talked to Steve Mill, the crew chief. He said it could be deja vu all over again <laughs> for them because their calculations tell them that they could make it to lap 191. Just like in June, they would run out with nine laps to go. Well, we shall see. Here comes the green flag. Rusty Wallace is at the front of the field, and I would have sworn that Mark led at the line, but uh, apparently not because Rusty is ahead of him as we get the green flag. And Dale Earnhardt down on the inside trying to get his lap back. There are 18 cars, 17 cars in the lead lap right now, so Earnhardt is running in 18th, but Michael Walter is a lap down. He just passed Earnhardt. Yeah, he did. Uh, Dale did not have oh, his car backing up a little yeah, bit. Sure is. Cars. He didn't get through one and two well at all, and uh, now he's running better, but he didn't uh, have a very good restart. Have you seen late speed up on the outside of Earnhardt? All those cars on the inside are a lap down. Now Michael Walter pulls up behind the 24 car Jeff Gordon. Wallace, Martin, Shepard, and Gordon are your front four. Lake Speed came out in fifth place on that pit stop. Actually came out sixth. He's passed Ken Schrader now, has moved up to fifth place. And Earnhardt's car is just not right. Yeah. That time he was way out in turn two. Lake Speed has went by, is trying to go by. Is going by, and I tell you, his car is just not right. Something wrong with that three car. Speed gets by him now in turn four. And it's a race for the lead. Mark Martin goes by and takes the lead away from Rusty Wallace. And again, he is way down on the bottom side of the track, way right down by the white line, comes up the track, has the lead, and Morgan Shepard now battling with Rusty for second, and maybe Shepard would like to take a shot at running at the front of the pack. He takes a look there, but let's see what they do to come off the turn. He's staying with him. In fact, gaining a little bit on Martin as he go into turn three. How about that? Morgan Shepard showing some real strength here. He won at Atlanta. His only win in the 93 season. Martin by half a car length ahead again as they come through the fourth turn. And Martin is going to lead this lap. But Morgan Shepard in a great run here this afternoon. John Kernan has more. I think they have found the, they've gotten it right. They've been taking bite out of it all day long. It's been tight, tight, but now it looks like they've got it set up where Morgan can drive it and actually challenge Mark Martin. But getting to the fuel mileage thing, they're within a few laps of going the rest of the way. We'll just have to wait to see if they decide to roll the dice that way or play that card, whatever, whatever gambling term they want to uh, use in that situation. But they're still figuring things up. 53 green flag laps, mm, maybe. Close. Four cars running together. Then we get back to Lake Speed. Here is Earnhardt and Jarrett running together, along with uh, Ted Musgrave and Ken Schrader. Yeah, Jarrett has just moved around. Ken Schrader taken over the sixth position. Musgrave has moved up in there in that battle as well. And also, Rusty Wallace trying to go by Morgan Shipper on the outside to take that second spot away. And look at Jeff Gordon is right in there, too. He's just looking for some place to go. He don't know which one to follow. Exactly right. And Mark Martin is loving this because it really takes his car four or five laps to get up to speed where he's faster than the other car. And these guys are giving him just a little bit of an advantage to get his car up to speed. As Morgan Shepard loses second and third, he goes back to fourth. GM cars hook up to run second and third, and Morgan is back to fourth. 151 laps and the average speed 148.0. Pretty good job. 
adjustment on that car during the pit stop. So, so they made adjustment on that six car too, guys. <laughs> we need to talk about. We need to get Ernie Neal on the screen so we can say congratulations. Yeah. On his birth of his right. Royal. <laughs> PA announcement. Hmm. Okay. ESPN Speed World welcomes you back to Michigan International Speedway where Mark Martin has a Seven tenths of a second lead on Rusty Wallace. Jeff Gordon is 88 hundredths of a second behind. Morgan Shepard is 1.1. Lake Speed is in fifth position, almost two seconds behind. And Lake is in some heavy traffic. Here comes Dale Jarrett and Ken Schrader. So uh, Lake is not in fifth position. It is Dale Jarrett who is in fifth. And there's Ted Musgrave in that group as well. So Lake's got his hands full right now. Yeah, the car seems to be pushing up a little bit in the turns. He just can't keep it down low. They're just driving right under it. And Dale Earnhardt, I said a moment ago that he was having a problem. We can see that he's changed his driving style or the problem. His car is much faster now versus the competition than he was just a couple of laps ago. Well, while we give a call to Ted Musgrave, let's give a call to Dale Jarrett, who started 27th. And here's how he has performed recently. Lap 115, he was 7th. Stayed there through lap 155 when he moved to 5th spot. And there's Ted Musgrave. And look at Ken Schrader taking advantage of the grab with the two cars running side by side. Got to move right around Dale Jarrett. Yep. But, uh, Jarrett just had problems getting around Dale Earnhardt. And here's Ernie Irvin. Looked like he's slowing down. He was running an 11 spot, and the car is. Oh, and Schrader spins right in front of Lake Speed. And Lake missed, him. missed it. Schrader keeps it up on the wall. I hope Look nobody out. else is going to be involved, and I don't think anybody else was. Oh, my goodness. Well, the gas mileage situation goes by the wayside here. Yeah, it does. That means that it will not come down to a fuel mileage race. There is the pole sitter for the event, Ken Schrader, who will not win here today and pick up the Unical bonus money. He's trying to get his car mo moving. Let's see. Let's watch this once again. He's on the inside of Earnhardt. And again, Dale is a lap down. Dale Earnhardt is a lap down. Looks like the, maybe the air was just taken off the spoiler and the back end just goes around him. Now watch Lake. Great job of moving down to the inside. Michael Walter comes down there out of the way. Jamie Spencer comes by. Ooh, and Greg Sachs <laughs> just gets by on the grass. Look, yeah. he's down on the grass. And again, uh, the spotters play a very important part. They were on the radio to their respective drivers back of this crash, guiding them through it. And they did. There's not a lot of damage to the car, but I think he stalled the motor and it won't start. There are the spotters that uh, keep track of where their car is on the track at all times. Schrader, meanwhile, continues to sit in the car. It looks like he would like to get the car going again. Yes, I'm sure he would get back to pits, but on some four tires, because we see the right rear tires flat. Yep. I'm sure that uh, he may have four flat tires right now. If we right, saw right sitting there down in the grass, it's hard to tell if it's flat or, or just in the grass there. We saw Ernie Irvin's car slowing down just a moment ago. I don't know what happened to the Kodak Film Chevrolet, but I'd like to say hello to his wife, Kim, back in Concord, North Carolina, and also a new daughter born on what, Thursday? Yep, Jordan Lee was born Leah. at, uh, Leah was born at uh, Charlotte University Medical Center, five pounds, 12 ounces. From Bobby Hillen's perspective, see how he gets through this incident involving Ken Schrader. The spotter's telling him, look, we got a problem here. And he nails the gas and says, let me get through that before he comes back. And now we see pit stops being made once again. Those on the lead lap come in, including Martin and Rusty. Here is Jerry and Mark Martin's pit. And right side tires going on to Mark Martin. Boy, you talk about someone taking a sigh of relief. This team really wanted to see that yellow flag come out. Uh, uh, and you see, 
Rusty Wallace's crew now going to work on that Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac. Left side tires on Mark Martin's car. Here is Wallace and Martin once again. We'll watch the drag race. And now Martin tries to block going down pit road. And Jeff Gordon looks to have a great pit stop. He will be out first, headed back to turn one. We might also miss you. And Larry McClure just walked by, guys, and told me that apparently Ernie Irvin said the engine let go. So they have taken the Kodak Chevrolet to the garage area. We are under caution here at Michigan International Speedway. This 24th annual champion spark plug 400. More from Michigan after this. Stay with us. Apparently, Jeff, uh, Brett Bodine just took on two tires because he came out in second place. See, uh, I bet Jeff. I bet Jeff Gordon just did too. They're going to bring Schrader yeah. back down to the pits and uh, put some tires on it. He said he had all four. Yeah. Flats. Okay. 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 Phillips waved to the uh, TV crowd. Satellite viewers, see what you look like. ESPN Speed World is being brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. By Country Time Lemonade Flavor Drink Mix with a taste of good old fashioned lemonade. And by McDonald's. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. Under caution here at Michigan International, the top five at the end of 159 laps, Jeff Gordon, Brett Bodine, Bobby Labonte, Ted Musgrave, and Mark Martin. Did, I, did the graphics say that the track record is Oh, good shot. <laughs> yeah, it did. 124 is a track. They were in a graphic. I only read what I see on the screen.
The green flag has just come out on lap 162 to restart the champion spark plug 400. That is Jeff Gordon up front. Dale Earnhardt is there also, but he's just trying to get his lap back. Well, Jerry Punch was a prophet today in the open of the show when he talked about the rookies and how that well they had qualified. They're also doing well in the race. Rookie Jeff Gordon leads. Bobby Labonte, another rookie, runs third. And look at the heavy traffic that Mark Martin, Jimmy Spencer, Dave Marcus, and others are in, including Rusty Wallace and Dale Jarrett and Lake Speed and Mark Martin. Lake and Mark Speed Martin. way down to the bottom. Four wide. Pit stop summary, Mark Martin in first, out fifth. Wallace from second to sixth. Gordon moved up to from third to first. Shepard from fourth to eighth. And Dale Jarrett from fifth to seventh. That was the restart order, and they are shuffling as we speak. Some of those cars only took on a couple of tires, like Brett Bodine and uh, the car number 55, Ted Musgrave. And so they got made real fast pit stops. And Mark Martin made a great move to go to the inside. Three D for moment going to take against one. And we can see Bill Arnold has passed the leader. Jan Hay again is in the wall hard as he came off turn four. So Dale Earnhardt will get back in the lead lap here if he can stay in front of Jeff Gordon until they get back around. No caution yet. Yeah, there the is. Caution's out. Yeah, the caution's out. Harry Gant making contact with the wall coming out of turn number four here in the trioval. And now the drivers have not seen the caution flag yet. But when they do, we will see Dale Earnhardt maybe get a lap back and a lot of shuffling still going on at the back. Yeah, they are racing back to the line. They aren't supposed to do that. I mean, it's a gentleman's <laughs> thing, but uh, the only person supposed to race back to the line is Jeff Gordon, and he's racing Earnhardt, but he doesn't beat him. Right. So Earnhardt did get his lap back. Man, oh, man. And there is Harry Gant, the reason for the caution. And there's going to be debris all around the racetrack, so I think this caution flag certainly was warranted. I tell you, this is a huge break for Dale Earnhardt. He was about to lose a bunch of points on, on a lot of people there today, but now he, he'll get back around and be able to uh, pick off some positions at least, whether he can get back to the front or not. Time will tell. Gant won this race a year ago. Who's going to pit then? I don't know. I, I can't imagine that, that many of them wouldn't unless someone didn't feel his car was going too well. Well, like Brad Bodine, you know, Brad yeah. Bodine. Yeah, yeah, he Member of the most recent crash before this one involving Ken Schrader. This is how it looked and sounded from our speed shot here in the trioval. And here's Harry Gantz. Oh, and a fire breaks out here on uh, Gant's car. I what, the rubber's on fire? fire. Well, he pulls it behind the wall. Here's uh, Jerry Punch with the word on Ken Schrader. Bob, they brought Kenny Schrader's Kodiak Chevy back behind the wall. They changed all four tires on it, and uh, then the car would not fire. So they pushed the car out on pit road, pushed it down pit road, and got it to fire. Now he's back on the racetrack, but he's lost some laps. There you can see Dale Earnhardt catching up and getting that lap back. 165 laps are completed. It's still Jeff Gordon up front. We should be going back green in just a moment. Nobody pitted except Coke. Hey, hey guys. And that was a last yeah. minute decision. I talked to Schrader. Boy, yeah. he was hot. I mean, he was hot. And Earnhardt. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You guessed it. He said, man, he wouldn't give him any room. He's a lap down. And boy, he was hot. Boy, he was furious. Hmm. Michael Walker might be in position to get a lap back.
watch from the Pontiac pace car as it comes down pit road, leaving the field on the racetrack for the restart. It is 3 o'clock Eastern time. Again, welcome to Michigan International Speedway. 166 laps complete. We're on lap 167. The green comes back out, and Jeff Gordon is still up front. Nobody made a pit stop in second to Derek Cope and the boat angles forward. Now here goes Mark Martin trying to get on the inside of Gordon. Can he make it? Did not make it that lap. Michael Waltrip is third in line, but he's a lap down. Would try to like to get a lap back. And John Kernan has a comment on the man who is leading at the moment, Jeff Gordon, but Mark Martin again challenges. The car is pushing really, really bad. It wants to shoot up toward the wall. Every time he goes into the turn, and Mark Martin leads him as he gets to the heading into turn one. Yes, indeed. Mark Martin goes back to the front now. Boy, this is really a break for Mark Martin because if Jeff Gordon's car is pushing, all the good cars behind that have a chance to run with Mark Martin, they've got to get by Jeff Gordon. And taking that two or three laps to do that will give Mark Martin a tremendous advantage as Dale Jarrett coming up in the Interstate Battery Chevrolet third spot. Great run for Dale Jarrett. There is Bobby Labonte racing with Jimmy Spencer and Rusty Wallace is right behind Spencer. Bobby Labonte was third on the restart here. Jarrett got by on the first lap. And Bobby was one of those that only took on two tires also, so it might be hurting him a little bit in the turns. I think we showed you earlier the race record 120-something. It's actually 157, and an average speed right now in our race is 144.6. Sterling Marlin, Bobby Hillen, Jimmy Hensley. Was that Jeff Bodine on the bottom side of the racetrack? Yeah, it's Brett Bodine on the outside of the racetrack, yeah. so some good, hard racing here. There's yeah, Brett in the green number 26, the Quaker State Ford. Oh, DW's in that bunch, too. Yeah, he is. And here's Earnhardt coming up in there, too. Earnhardt was in 16th place when he restarted. 16 cars are still in the lead lap. Riding with Jeff Bodine there for a moment as Morgan Shepard and Rusty Wallace challenge each other for position here in the trial. This is Morgan trying to take the spot away from Rusty. They're up there in the point standings. Rusty third, Morgan fifth coming into this race. Here's another Fram field summary for you. today with the exception of Todd Bodine. Now, if he keeps that car, if he keeps the engine running and could drive off, there might not be a caution play. But the caution is out. Yep. yep. Well, we got to start it. Maybe there's some debris up there or something. Huge break for Dale Earnhardt because he's able to, he's passed five or six cars. Now he'll be able to pull up on the back bumpers, back bumper of the cars in front of him. Yeah, the front three cars have moved away pretty good from the fourth, fifth, and sixth place cars. And, uh, there's Michael Walter trying to get a lap back, but it's not going to be able to do it. And this is the race back to the caution. Now, will anybody make a pit stop put on fresh tires? Well, those that are, that are back towards the back in the lead lap might pay them to do so. Yeah, they don't have much to lose, so they might as well come in and get fresh tires. I really don't believe the front runners will. Although, if Mark Martin comes in, you'll see everybody else following right down pit road. Ah. Rick Wilson, the STP Pontiac, has pulled his car down pit road into the pits. He went a lap down. Bobby Loomis, the crew chief, talking to Rick. It's a 26th position. This is the Heilig Myers Ford Thunderbird driven by Bobby Hill. Looks like the door's bashing on the dirt. Here's a replay of the crash. Yeah, he's, he's got high by himself. Got the loose stuff up there and around it. And boy, there were three cars side by side right behind him. Of course, they singled out in a hurry and uh, were able to get under him and go on by without any damage. And he slips down to the inside of the track and you see other cars go by on the outside then. 
And Rick goes back out onto the racetrack as we look at the field come off of corner number four to see if anyone comes in for a pit stop. And no, none at least running up front. We will continue our live coverage from Michigan after these messages. are under our eighth caution of the day. The record is nine. So many times the Winston Cup drivers have the spotlight, but truck drivers on the Winston Cup series had their day in the sun again today. Here's Benny. For the second year in a row, Mayflower Transit is conducting a competition among Winston Cup truck drivers to find out who's the better of the truck drivers. Joining me is one of our remote senior engineers who hauls our show from one location to the other, Billy Dillahay. Billy, you're a truck driver. Is this tough or is this fairly easy? Well, it's pretty tough, Benny. It takes a while to get used to doing this. Uh, guy started into a blindside back right there, and uh, he got a cone or two, but uh, basically they're doing a real good job. It's, it's something that's not easy to do. It just takes a lot of practice and a lot of years of doing it. What kind of weight are we looking at this tractor and trailer? Uh, 80,000 pounds. That's, that's 40 tons. So that cone ought to be flattened out by the time these guys get over that. What is the toughest thing about driving a truck? Well, uh, basically, Benny, just paying attention to what you're doing, looking way down the road, knowing what's going to happen, anticipating it, uh, realizing you got a lot of weight you have to stop, and realizing your load's worth a lot of money. Not that uh, the average car is not worth some money, but uh, these guys have to do a, a real good job, and most of them do. As we see the truck weaving through these cones, how far apart are the cones? I'd say they're about 90 feet looking at them here, Benny. They could be 100, but uh, no more than 100. And the truck is what, 60, 70 feet long? Well, uh, that truck there is probably uh, right at 75 anyway, maybe 80. So it only gives him 25 feet to spare. Yes, sir. He came out of the turn right there, and now he's going into a blind side back. And once he gets around uh, past these cones, he's got a left side back. And he's uh, obviously turning the wheel the opposite direction of what he wants the tra uh, trailer to go. So. Uh, it's, it's not an easy thing. It just takes practice like anything, just like announcing, Benny. Does gray hair directly relate to ability to do this? No. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do that. But uh, is this grumpy here? I believe it is, isn't it? This is Mike Culberson, the driver of the Meineke right. Butler uh, truck. And he's back. It looks like he's missed all the cones. Yeah, he's doing a good job. I think he's got a little more gray hair than I do, so he's, he's going to make it, I think. He backs, backs. <laughs> And he goes through all the cones. And you've got to look, you've got to use your mirrors. You can't look out the window, correct? That's right. Benny, remember, gray hair is better than no hair at all. Well, that's true. <laughs> and we see Grumpy backing up, backing up. And this is our winning run. Real good run there for Grumpy. We can hear the, all the people applauding. 
And here we have Mike Culberson with a winning time of one minute, 46, 47, 47 and a half seconds. So Good congratulations run. to Mike Culberson and all the Winston Cup truck drivers because these guys, week in and week out, get these race cars to the track. May have a new uh, color man on our hands here with Billy Delahaye, huh? Well, here comes the green flag to resume racing. Weather conditions have changed here in the last few minutes as the cloud cover has really moved over, dropping temperatures. The green flag comes out on lap 176. That's Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon up front. This cooled off so much we might have to turn off the air conditioner around. I doubt that. Yeah. And we can see that Mark Martin already jumped out to a two, three, four car length advantage on Jeff Gordon. And meanwhile, they are racing some serious racing going on behind these guys. And that's back there where Dale Earnhardt is in the, behind a, a big group of cars. Mark Martin looking for two consecutive wins in NASCAR Winston Cup competition here at Michigan to add to last Sunday's victory at Watkins Glen. There's the big pack of cars behind Mark. There's Earnhardt, late speed, the 55 car, Ted Musgrave, that's for position. Three abreast racing here, Bobby Hillen and Kenny Wallace and Brett Bodine. Brett and uh, Greg Sachs did make pit stops under that caution. Morgan Shepard trying to take over third from Dale Jerry. Up ahead of this group of cars. see Wally Dolan back. He spent several laps in the pits, put in the axle back in his car where he broke an axle on the pit stop. DJ Jones, the white car right behind them. Here's a, he gets to some Morgan Shepard's cars. He looks back at Dale Jarrett and uh, yeah, he just, just passed him going into turn three, took third away. Inside Jeff Bodine's Motorcraft 4 now with the telemetry. See how he's doing now compared to earlier in the day when he had 199 miles an hour at the end of the tri-oval and backstretch. We just spent some time in the uh, in the pit, so I don't know if the engine's running up to full song now. You can see he's down to 154 miles per hour through the corner. I don't think he's going to get any place close to 199. Huh? I don't think so. on the inside of the race back there, he is. And he is several laps down. Now we see Bobby Labonte. Good run for Bobby Labonte, the Maxwell House car. 193 and then the break. Jeff and I had uh, some heat overheating problems with the motorcraft forward. And he's being shown in the 24th position right now, a couple of laps behind the leader. There's see Ted Musgrave. There's Dale Earnhardt pulling up behind Musgrave. And the interval between that pack of cars and the leader, Mark Martin. Right now, Dale Earnhardt, our Winston Cup points leader, is running ninth position. And here's third and fourth. There is Morgan Shepard. And the interval between Martin and Shepard, first to third, is 1.1 seconds. And you can see Rick Wilson's car down on the apron once again as he makes his way slowly around this racetrack. We'll take another break and be right back with more from Michigan.
ESPN Speed World is being brought to you by Quaker State. The big Q is one tough motor oil. By Maxwell House Coffee, blended with Colombian beans, always good to the last drop. And by Allied Signals Fram Filters, you can pay a little now or a lot later. Well, is the luck of the Irish that we talked about early in the show going to hold for Mark Martin? He leads. Here's a side-by-side -side battle involving Link Speed and Bobby Labonte. And Lake takes the position away from Bobby going into turn one. That it moves Lake into the sixth position. You see Rusty Wallace just ahead of him there. Rusty's in fifth place. Here's a Fram field summary. has got by Ted Rush right now in the eighth spot. 16 cars are on the lead lap. Jeff Bodine is down two laps in the Motorcraft board. Harry Gant crashed out. So did Hut Strickland. And Todd Bodine. Morgan Shepard is gaining on the car number 24 of Jeff Gordon. Morgan Shepard is third in the Citgo Ford, and Leonard Wood, his crew chief, has been named the Western Auto Mechanic of the Race. So we congratulate Leonard on uh, that distinction here this afternoon at Michigan. Morgan's had a great race all uh, afternoon. Started uh, fourth and is currently third, but moving in on second place, Jeff Gordon. He's able to keep the car right down on the racetrack. Remember, Jeff Gordon, the last pit stop they made, he only took on two tires. Right. And uh, and he passed up an opportunity to come in and get two during that other caution, so uh, yeah, just, just having to live with it. Just didn't want to give up that track position as Lake Speed now moves in on Rusty Wallace, trying to take over the fifth position. Wallace's car, he's having to drive it very high in the turns, and that opens the door for Lake to drive under him. There's Bobby Labonte still having a great run here today, and he's going to try to follow late speed around Rusty Wallace. Don't know if he can make it work or not. Chose to go with his four teammate. Well, now I think he's a little indecisive. <laughs> well, late couldn't quite do it. Just wouldn't stick down there. Meanwhile, right behind him, Ted Musgrave is trying to pass Dale Earnhardt and does. does. Yeah. So that's four points that Earnhardt has lost. Look at that draft that Earnhardt has going. Woo. Well, he's trying to make the back end of that forward list going back to the turn so they can pass him again. That wasn't a draft, that was a push. <laughs> right. we got 14, 28. 14 laps to go. He's got to run on Rusty this time. Well, Rusty comes back, he has some momentum off the turn. Bobby, <laughs> he's going to say, okay. That's been sixth and seventh. Wallace, Speed, Labonte. 13 laps to go when they come back. Well, we're going to take another break here so that we'll be back and set up things for the finish of this race. Right now, it is Mark Martin leading and looking very, very strong. Down, didn't he? Yes, he has. Where he was earlier. 
creeping in a little bit closer, but not nearly as fast as he was there earlier. Yep. ESPN Speed World in the closing laps of the Champion Spark Plug 400 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Michigan International Speedway. Mark Martin is on your left. Here comes Jeff Gordon in second, Morgan Shepard in third. There is Dale Jarrett. And look at Morgan Shepard, or rather uh, Ted Musgrave, close in on Bobby Labonte. Well, we saw him pass Dale Earnhardt there a little while ago, and they were pretty far behind this group, and Musgrave has just run them down and caught them now, wants to pass them. Musgrave been doing a fabulous job this afternoon in driving a Jasper engine, U.S. Air car. And if we just join us, we did tell you at the front of the show that Ted Musgrave in the 55 car will be driving the 16 car. Here we go, race for second. Morgan Shepard trying to take second away from Jeff Gordon with less than 10 laps to go. From the in-car camera carried by Morgan, he cannot make the pass coming off the second corner. They go down the back stretch. Okay, real quick. Ted Musgrave's going to drive the 16 car with Jack Rouse next year. Thank you. I did that with the 16 car. You got that car in there. Man. It's a Jack Rouse car. I know that Jim drives it now, but Shepard's still trying to figure a way around Jeff Gordon. You know, Jeff Gordon finished second here in June. Yep, sure did. And Musgrave did pass Bobby Malani. So he's now seventh. Musgrave seventh. Nine laps, nine laps to go. Here Musgrave, he's got the group worked out on the bottom of the racetrack. Now, if he can just get to these guys, it's not going to be a problem. There's the leader, Mark Martin, looking for his second win in a row and his second win of the 93 season. Behind him, Morgan Shepard still trying to wrestle away second place from Jeff Gordon, who is trying to finish second. Actually, he'd like to win, but he finished second here in June, and that's where he's running now. Now, Lake Speed has a run on, on Rusty Wallace once again, down on the inside, but when they get to the turn down here, he has to back off, and Rusty's been able to stay up there with him. Let's see what happens this time. It looks like Lake had to back off once again, but here comes Ted Musgrave down on the inside when Lake backed off, but didn't quite stick enough for him that time, did he? No, not quite, but it did allow Musgrave to get right up on the back bumper of these cars. He figures if Lake will try that one more time, he'll be able to pass him. <laughs> <laughs> and Lake's going to try it one more time. He's going to look to the inside at least. Sterling Marlin has dropped off the pace down the back stretch while we continue to watch this great battle, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth here. There it is, one of the cars on the lead lap. There's you see Ted Musgrave now down on the inside of Lake Speed. Can he make it work coming off of that turn? No, hey, here comes Bobby Labonte to block that spot. So now he has no choice except to try to pass Lake Speed on the bottom. Well, did not get passed on the high side by Bobby Labonte there. Yeah. Rusty Wallace is loving that while those guys race back there. Allow him to get just a little bit away from Lake Speed. Six laps to go for Mark Martin. Jeff Gordon is still second, then Morgan Shepard, Dale Jarrett, and then this group. Wallace, Speed, Lavani, and Musgrave. There's Mark. There is Jeff and Morgan. Dale Jarrett's running all by himself in fourth, and now fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. And Musgrave got by Bobby Labonte again. Well, we brought back the camera to our leader. Rookies second and eighth. So, Ned, it looks to me like Winston Cup racing is alive and well with the young drivers we have today. Lots of talent, no question about it. This. Very strong. Five laps to go now. Now Musgrave again tries to take over the position from Lake Speed. This is slick down there on the bottom of the racetrack, but you pinch the car down and it and it uh, kills your momentum. 
drops the RPMs on the car, and then the car on the outside just gets about and drives away with that momentum he's built up on the outside. But I think Lake Speed is faster than either one of them. I mean, uh, excuse me, Ted Musgrave is faster than either one of them, but he just simply can't get by. And there's a race for second as we come to the line here. Morgan Shepard has moved on the inside of Jeff Gordon going into turn one. He might have it this time. Yes, he does. Use the inside line. Gordon back to third now with four laps to go. Morgan Shepard is second, Jeff Gordon third. And here once again is Musgrave to the inside of speed. <laughs> Aaron's having a great battle. They are really having a super race. Dale Earnhardt, the NASCAR Winston Cup points leader, is running ninth as there are 15 cars on the lead lap. He's not going to lose nearly as many points as he would have had he not been able to get that lap back. Yep. Three to go for Mark Martin. Side by side. I tell you what, that Jasper engine is doing a pretty good job because Lake Speed is able to get some draft off Rusty Wallace. Musgrave's down on the bottom all by himself, able to keep up. And he come up, come up, Ted. Now, don't do it now. <laughs> I need a spot for Ted, don't I? <laughs> yeah. It sounds like I'm pulling against Lake Speed. No, I'm not pulling against Lake Speed. I'd... I just tell him what he had to do to make the pass. Exactly. Speed's had another great race as he had in Watkins Glen before suffering mechanical problems. Now then, Bobby Lamont is going to try to pass all of them in with all this traffic. Now, what kind of deal is that? He went inside the white line on the apron to get around Sterling Marlin, who's only running about 60 or 70 miles an hour. Well, that looked like a Dale Earnhardt move for Bobby Lamont. He just pulled on. I tell you, he thrilled this crowd. <laughs> he sure does, too. The crowd, which was uh, kind of asleep, really was awakened by that move. Lap and a half to go. Here comes Mark Martin. He's coming down for the white, isn't he, Bob? Yes, he is. And those shamrocks and horseshoes and every other kind of superstitious tool here in the Irish Hills appears to be working for Mark Martin because he has less than two miles to go for a victory. The battle for second place remains close. Morgan Shepard has it right now, but right there is Jeff Gordon. We look back on Jeff for Morgan's Sitco Ford. They both come off the second quarter corner while Mark Martin is halfway down the back stretch. There's Dale Jarrett running again by himself. Wallace, Speed, and Musgrave continue to run nose to tail. All right, Mark Martin is coming off turn four as we watch these guys go in turn three. And here Mark he Martin, here he comes. He wins his ninth career NASCAR Winston Cup race in his 222nd start. Shepard is second. Then Gordon, look at this battle. It is Musgrave. Oh, got the position from both Speed and Wallace. And I don't know who finished fifth then behind them yeah. on six. But Musgrave did fifth but the dead heat between Lake Speed and Rusty Wallace. Here's Jerry Punch with Steve Meal. Steve, congratulations. This this track owes you one, I believe. Well, I don't know if any place owes us one. We had a great weekend. I had a tough weekend at home. I like to say, Tyler, hope you're feeling better. Shane, I hope you're being careful on your jet ski. And Lacey, you got to be the toughest woman in the world. I'm off racing. You're keeping the home fire burning, and I appreciate it. Steve Mill, very, very happy. On his way to victory lane to celebrate with Mark Martin. Mark Martin, his seventh top five finish in his last nine races. He continues his great late season charge for the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. You got him. <laughs> <laughs> well, who won the pool? Yeah, we 
Looks like and she was about the sixth or seventh. Ready? I'll take a tour. I'll make sure she gets it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Four-year-old Mark Martin climbs out of his car in Victory Lane, and Mark, congratulations on a win here at Michigan. Thanks. I tell you what, those Goodyear radials were—they were great. That last set was perfect. And I want to thank Valvoline and and uh, this crew. You know, they worked so hard all summer long, put me in great race cars. And Ricky Rudd was tough today, and uh, he had some bad luck and kind of left it to us. Sort of roll reversal from June. Does, it, does this uh, make up for what happened a couple of months ago? Well. That one's gone, and you'll never get it back. And we're, I, you know, I've been wanting for a long time to win a Bush race on Saturday, and then win the Cup race on Sunday. And this is a great weekend, especially after Watkins Glen. Uh, it's great. And he pulled off the sweep as he celebrates here with his family in Victory Lane. Bob, a great weekend for Mark Martin, and a great weekend of racing here in Michigan International. As second place car was Morgan Shepard. Third was Jeff Gordon, fourth was Dale Jarrett, and fifth was Ted Musgrave with an average speed of just a little over 144 miles an hour. Here's the official results. We'll show them to you very quickly because we have to get off the air here. Bill Elliott finished in 10th. Dale Earnhardt was in ninth position when the checkered flag dropped. Bill Parsons back in 19th. Jimmy Spencer 20th. Kenny Wallace 23rd, one of the rookies, and Jeff Bodine after his trouble finished 24th. Harry Gant, last year's winner, finished down in 30th position. Ernie Irvin had a good run for a while, finishes in 32nd. Rudd, 35th. Todd Bodine finished in 40th position, and Rich Fickle was 41st. The point standings now. Earnhardt is still on top, but Dale Jarrett gained 22. Rusty Wallace gained 17. Mark Martin gained 42. And Morgan Shepard gained 32 points. A week from this coming Saturday night, August 28th, the annual visit to Bristol International Speedway at night, the Bud 500. Join us for that race. That's our next coverage of NASCAR Winston Cup competition. We thank you for joining us here this afternoon for Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch. I'm Bob Jenkins. So long, everyone. Stand by, I'm still not done. Close the door. You can come in if you want to, just close the door. <coughs> I'll see you 7.30 at Hertz. Okay. Ready? Welcome back to our highlighted version of the Champion Spark Plug 400 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Michigan International Speedway. Let's move ahead now in our coverage.
We move ahead in our coverage of the NASCAR Winston Cup Champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International Speedway. Welcome back to Michigan International Speedway and our highlighted coverage of the Champion Spark Plug 400 NASCAR Winston Cup race. We now move ahead in our coverage. You going to Indy, Ned? Are you coming down to Indy? Oh, good. Great. Okay. Am I clear? Thank you.